You can make money online from home without any experience by selling on Amazon. And I've taught people just like you how to make an extra hundred thousand to million dollars a year using this step-by-step -step method I'm gonna teach you in this video. And this is a complete tutorial where I'm gonna show you from A to Z exactly how I created this real Amazon FBA business. And there are three common ways to sell on Amazon. The first is where you find products that are being sold at a discount. Like this product that's being sold at Lowe's.com for $99, but it's being sold on Amazon.com for $200. You would then buy it from Lowe's.com and sell it on Amazon.com for that increased price. This is called retail arbitrage. The second way to sell on Amazon is called wholesale. And you can go to sites like Tundra.com where you can buy named brand products with a wholesale discount and then flip it on Amazon for the full retail price. Like this product right here that's being sold for $26 per unit on Tundra.com and that same product's being sold for almost $60 on Amazon.com. You can buy it, flip it, and keep the profit. The third type of product that you can sell on Amazon is products like this bacon cooker that's doing $150,000 in sales per month. And you can find out how much any product on Amazon is doing by using this little plugin called Helium 10. You click on it and you click on X-Ray and you can see that this product's doing $150,000 in sales every single month, even though this is a new release product with only 59 reviews and a three-star average. But what's crazy about this product is if you go to alibaba.com, you can find this exact same product being sold for 99 cents a piece. So you can buy this product in bulk put your own brand on it and sell it on Amazon for a markup of $15. This is called private label, where you buy products in bulk, but you create your own brand and slap it on the product and put it on Amazon, which allows you to have your own listing so you're not competing with other people like you would with retail arbitrage or wholesale. These are the three most common ways to sell products on Amazon but there's actually a fourth way to sell on Amazon that I personally think is the best way for you to make money selling products on Amazon right now. And I'm gonna share step-by-step -step how to do all four of these methods for selling on Amazon in this video. And my name is Travis and I've done over $6 million in sales using this new way of selling on Amazon that I'll talk about later in this video. So smash the like button because in this video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how I actually created a legitimate Amazon business. And we're gonna use this product as an example throughout the entire video so you can see exactly what it's like to create your own Amazon business. And warning, a lot of people think that selling on Amazon is dead, that you can't make money from Amazon FBA anymore. And it's true, a lot of people are struggling to actually make money selling on Amazon, but it's because they're selling the wrong types of product. And there's 9 million sellers on Amazon, there's 4,000 new sellers joining every single day, and 85% of those sellers are either doing wholesale or private label, which means these ways of selling on Amazon are very competitive, it's oversaturated, and there's not really any good products left to sell if you're gonna be doing private label or wholesale. And if you find a winning product, it's just a matter of time until another seller comes around and tries to sell the exact same product that you're selling. And that's why I recommend this fourth way of selling on Amazon that I call creating a passion product. And Jeremy is making over $30,000 a month selling his passion product. AJ just broke $40,000 a month. And Brent in the last 12 months has made over $1 million selling this product on amazon.com. And this is the method that I use to create this product here that I'm gonna be showing you step-by-step step in this video. And I wanna be clear that you can still make money with retail arbitrage, wholesale, and private label, but these aren't the best ways to create a long-term passive income business. But I do still think they can be good ways to test out selling on amazon.com. I'll talk about the pros and the cons of all these different ways of selling on Amazon later in this video. But first, it's important to know how selling on Amazon works. And Amazon has over 300 million prime customers going to their website every single day looking to buy products. And last year, people spent over $500 billion buying things off amazon.com. But the most important thing you need to know is that two thirds of all the sales that happen on amazon.com Com are from third-party sellers. That's people like you and me selling our products on Amazon. But the reason that I think this is the best way to make money online right now is because of the Amazon FBA program. And there's two different ways that you can sell products on Amazon. There's FBA and FBM. FBM stands for Fulfilled by Merchant. This is where you sell products on Amazon's website and anytime your product gets a sale, you will pick, pack, and ship out the product to your customer yourself, which means that you need to spend time 
packaging up the product and you need to spend money on shipping out your product. However, if you take advantage of the FBA program, which stands for Fulfilled by Amazon, all you have to do is get your manufacturer to send all your products into the Amazon warehouse and anytime that you get a sale, Amazon will pick, pack and ship the product out for you. Meaning you don't have to spend your time packaging up your product or going to the post office. Another benefit of using FBA is it makes your product prime eligible, which means that people that go to Amazon that are prime members can buy your product and receive it within two days. And prime products get way more sales than non-prime items. And this is because prime customers want to buy prime eligible products because they know they can get that fast shipping. Also, Amazon is more likely to recommend a prime product at the top of the search results and products at the top of the search results tend to get the most sales. And this is why I call it passive income. Amazon already has 300 million prime customers going to their website looking to buy products and they're handling the shipping for you, which means once you get a winning product that's making sales, you can remove yourself from the business and you're gonna keep making money because those customers are gonna keep going to Amazon and Amazon's gonna handle all the fulfillment. And what's crazy about this is Amazon has spent over a hundred billion dollars on marketing to get those customers to trust Amazon, to go to Amazon to buy things. And Amazon allows you to sell products on their website. And now let's talk about the pros and cons of the different ways to sell on Amazon. And retail arbitrage is the easiest way to start selling on Amazon and it doesn't take a lot of money, so it's a great way to try out selling on Amazon. But in the long run, it's actually a lot of work because you constantly need to be hunting for new products to sell. And another con is that you don't own the products that you sell, which means that other people can sell the exact same product on the exact same listing as you. The same is true for wholesale. You don't own the product, which means other people can sell that product. Plus, since you don't own the product, you don't own the brand, the manufacturer who you're buying from can cut you off whenever you want. With wholesale, you're basically just a middleman. But one of the pros of the wholesale method is it's relatively easy because you don't need to create a product. You can just find an existing product and sell that. But I warn you, if it's easy for you to do, that means it's gonna be easy for other people to find the same product, and that's gonna mean you'll have a lot of competition on Amazon. And that's where private labeling comes in. And the big pro with private labeling is no one else can sell on your listing because you own the brand. But sadly, with private label, you don't really own the product. The manufacturer actually owns the product, and they can private label that same product to a ton of other sellers. So even though there won't be any competition on your Amazon listing, there could still be a ton of people selling the exact same product as you, but just with different branding. And that's why I recommend creating a passion product, which is similar to private label, but the main difference is you don't just take an existing product and slap your brand on it. You actually improve the product. And there are two main ways to create a passion product. You can take an existing product and just improve it like Brent did with Searpro, or you can create a brand new product that's not on the market from scratch, like Jeremy did with Slim Caddy. And the product I'm gonna use as an example example in this video is called Rocket Tea. It's the highest caffeine tea in the world. And these are the steps that I use to create this Amazon FBA business. And these are the same steps that you will follow whether you're doing private label or creating your own passion product. Now, if you do want to try retail arbitrage or wholesale instead, it's very simple. But instead of following these steps, you'll just follow these steps. And I did previously record and release videos showing how I did every single step of this process. I have those videos in a playlist. And what I'm doing in this video is I'm gonna compile all those videos. I'm gonna cut out what I think is the most essential parts and put it into this one video. There are timestamps below that will link you to every single section of this video. And to create this business, I partnered with a random student in my Amazon FBA program who had no previous experience selling on Amazon to prove to you that if he can do it, you can do it too. And I am going to be partnering with more students that are in my Amazon FBA program. And my program is called The Passion Products formula. And in this program, I go into way more detail than I'm going to be able to get to in this video. It comes with over a hundred step-by-step lessons. Plus it comes with weekly Q and A calls with me and other Amazon FBA coaches and a bunch of other benefits. If you want to learn about it, there's a link down below in the description. You can get on the wait list. It's not open right now, but you can click on the link down below to get on the wait list for the next time that I open it. And I recommend on your first time watching this video to watch this video all the way till the end, because I want you to have an idea of how this process works. Then then come back and rewatch this video for a second time and take notes. At the end of this video, I'm also going to show you the results of the first three months of selling this product on Amazon, including what the revenue is, all the different costs, and our final profit. 
And after that, I'm gonna share with you the three biggest mistakes that new Amazon sellers make. And this is probably the most important part of the video. So make sure that you watch this video all the way till the end. And now let me show you how to find a profitable product to sell on Amazon. And this is called product research because you're researching the product that you're going to sell. So smash the like button because this video took a ton of work to make and it's the only tutorial that's gonna show you how a real Amazon FBA business was created. And how you do product research is gonna depend on which way of selling on Amazon you choose. But no matter what, the goal with product research is to find a product that's gonna sell really well where there's not a lot of competition. Let's dive in a little bit deeper and I'm gonna show you how to find your own passion product or private label product and it's only gonna take five minutes. This is the quickest way I know of to do product research and find a profitable product to sell on Amazon. Let's start the timer. And the first step to finding your Amazon FBA product is to go to amazon.com. And Amazon actually tells you exactly what products you should be selling on Amazon. It tells you what the best selling products are. And we can go to this best sellers tab right here to find out exactly what's selling well on Amazon. And this will show us the best selling products in every single category. And I'll show you how to use that in just a second. But let's pause the timer so I can show you this hack on how to find the hottest new products on Amazon. Just just click on new releases and we can actually look right here. Let's look at this product right here. It's being sold for $15. It has no reviews. And when we click on it, we can actually see how long it's been selling on Amazon. If we scroll down to the bottom here, we can see that it's been selling on Amazon for about one month. And here is a secret. You can actually find out exactly how much any product on Amazon is making. Take this best selling rank number, copy it, and you can use the free Jungle Scout sales estimator tool. You'll just paste in that number right here. You'll select the marketplace and then you'll select the category. In this case, it is kitchen and dining and then you'll click estimate sales. And we can see that that product is selling 10,000 units per month. And when we do the math, each product is being sold for $15. That means that this is over $150,000 in revenue every single month. So already we found a product that is making over $100,000 per month. So when people say that Amazon FBA is dead, that you can't make any money on it, it's just because they don't know what products to sell. And you can prove this to yourself by going to the new releases and seeing all the new products that are making tons and tons of money. And you can use the new releases and this other tab called Movers and Shakers to find out what products are selling really well. Movers and Shakers let you know what products have had the biggest gains in sales in the past 24 hours. So you can use this to look for trends, to look for things that are up and coming. But let's start the timer back up and I only have four minutes to show you how I found my next Amazon product. And we're gonna go back to the best seller tab. And this best sellers list is organized by the different departments here. And so we're gonna click on one of the departments. Let's go with grocery and gourmet for right now. And when you click on that, you'll see that it has all kinds of subcategories. And the riches are in the niches. You wanna go really deep inside these subcategories. And the reason that I picked grocery and gourmet is because when I'm looking for a product on Amazon, there is a checklist of things that I like to look for. I like to sell products on Amazon that are lightweight, ideally under one pound, easy to ship, meaning nothing that's going to break like glass or anything like that during the shipping process. Products that are between $15 all the way up to $85. And that's because if you're selling a product that's under $15, it's very hard to make a profit because the Amazon selling fee and the Amazon FBA pick and pack fee are relatively high compared to what your price of your product is. I also like to sell products that are under $85 because if you're selling a product that's over $85, you're gonna have to convince people to buy a product that's not an impulse buy. And usually that means that you're gonna have to spend a lot of money on marketing. And the last main thing that I look for in a product that I'm going to sell on Amazon is ideally I wanna sell a product that is consumable, meaning people are going to eat it, drink it, or use it up, and that they're going to have to order another one every single week, every single month, on some kind of a repeat pattern. This means that every time you get a new customer, really, they're gonna order again and again and again, which means more money for you. And that's why the grocery and gourmet food category is one of my favorite categories to sell in. But now that we're in the department of grocery and gourmet, let's look at some of the products here. And the first three products are all beverages. They're all consumable beverages. And another pattern that I'm seeing is four out of the first six products that are best selling in this category are all about energy. They're all about caffeine. We have coffee right here and energy drinks here on the top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into beverages. And again, the riches are in the niches. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go another level deeper. Now, something I noticed is that coffee and energy drinks are very competitive. They're very saturated. I don't wanna try to compete with that. 
What I'm gonna do instead is I see that one of these subcategories is tea. And tea is lightweight, it has very high margins. It's a really great product to sell. So we're gonna click on that. And when you click on the tea category, there's even more separate subcategories here. Now what I would do at this point is I'd go through every single one and look for opportunities. But let me give you an example of this. If we go to tea samplers right here, we can see some of the best selling products. And right here on number five, I see a product that I think is an amazing opportunity. So I'm gonna click on this and we can actually find out how much per month this product is making. Now there was the method that I showed you earlier, but here's an even easier method that you can use. And there's this free plugin to Google Chrome called Helium 10. I'll put a link to that down below and you'll use the X-ray tool. And this will show you exactly how much per month every single product is making. In fact, every single flavor on this page is making around $80,000 per month. And if you do the math, that's almost $1 million per year per flavor with this product. The next question I ask myself with this product research method is how can I make a better product than this? A more premium product that has a higher price point, which means a better profit margin. And when I look at this product, the thing that stands out to me is it's all about high caffeine energy. They talk about how it's 150 milligrams of caffeine per serving. So they're really positioning themselves as a high caffeine tea. Now the key thing here with this product research method is we're not going to just copy this product. We're not gonna sell this exact same product. What we're gonna do instead is we're gonna figure out how we can make a better product than this, a product that is more premium, a product that people would rather buy than this product. And when I look at this and I try to figure out why are people buying this, the main thing that comes to mind is because this is high caffeine energy. It's a high caffeine tea. And this is the secret to making money with Amazon. It's to realize that Amazon is a search engine and people go to Amazon to search for products that they wanna buy. And I think that people buying this product are searching for high caffeine tea. So let's put that into the search bar here. And you can see that this is the product that's at the top of the search results. But when I look at the search results, none of these products really stand out to me as being high caffeine tea. In fact, the number one product actually looks like a sleepy time relaxing tea. So what we're gonna do is make a better product. And the way we're gonna do that is by adding more caffeine than the competitors and making better branding and packaging. This is what I call a passion product. And that's what I did for the product that I'm gonna be releasing on Amazon in about one month. When our product shows up on the search results, it's gonna be the obvious choice that people are gonna to wanna to click on and purchase. Now that you know the basics about how to find a product to sell on Amazon, let me show you the real secret way that professionals actually use to find a product to sell on Amazon. Best of all, it only takes five more minutes for me to turn you into an expert at finding hidden products. Let's start the timer. And the first step is to sign up for this free tool Tool called Helium 10. And you can get your free account by clicking the link in the description down below. Once you've signed up for your free account, you can log in and you'll go to the tool section. Now there's three different ways that I use this tool to do product research. Black box is the most common way and it's under this product research section. But two of my favorite ways to do product research are using Cerebro in the magnet tool. Let me show you how to use the Cerebro tool. To use this tool, you need to paste the ASIN in this box right here. ASIN stands for Amazon Standard Identification Number. And every single product on Amazon has their own unique ASIN number. And to find this, you go to a product, you scroll down to this information down below right here, and you'll click on the ASIN, copy it, and then you paste that right here. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna get the keywords or basically the things that people type in to Amazon in order to find this product. And it'll tell you what people are searching for where they ultimately buy this product. And we can see right here, caffeine tea is resulting in 97 sales of this product every single month. And so people go to Amazon, they type in caffeine tea, they find this product and they purchase it. People are also typing in Zest Energy Tea, which is the brand name Zest Tea, all these different things, Zest Tea Energy Tea, Energy Tea, High Caffeine, Tea Extra Caffeine, High Caffeinated Tea, Green Tea Caffeine, Tea with Caffeine, all these different permutations of the same thing. Basically people are looking for tea with a high amount of caffeine. So what this is letting us know is that people are buying this product specifically because they're typing in high caffeine tea. And so what we can do again is we can make a better product than this. So what I recommend doing is every time you go to Amazon and you're interested in purchasing a product, come to this tool, paste in the ASIN number and see what people are searching for in order to purchase that product. And then think to yourself, how can I make a better product that would better fit that search result? So that when people search for that 
phrase that's right here, they'd be more likely to buy my product than this competitor product. And that's the key thing that professional Amazon sellers know. They realize that Amazon is just a search engine. And if you can make a product that people are more likely to purchase than the competitors, Amazon's gonna put you to the top of the search results. And something that's very interesting is that the product at the top of the search results gets majority of the sales. So you wanna be the first place product. Now the second way to do product research using this tool is called the magnet keyword research tool. And this tool is very helpful if you don't have a product in mind. And what you're gonna do right here is you're just gonna type in a keyword. Let's say for instance, tea. We know that we wanna sell a type of tea product. And what this tool will do is it'll tell you all the things related to tea that people are typing in to Amazon and it'll show you how many sales per month are coming from each of the different search phrases as well as the search volume. So we can see right here, people are typing in Chinese tea around 3,800 times per month, which is resulting in around 258 sales. And there's over 14,000 keywords that Helium 10 shows us. So we're gonna filter these results down. And there's only two fields that I fill out. The first filter we'll set up is search volume. We wanna put a minimum of 500 search volume because anything less than that, it's not really a product that's worth us pursuing. The second thing we're gonna look at is the word count. This is where the idea of long tail keywords come in. So for instance, people typing in T in Amazon, the chance of you creating a product that's gonna rank number one or even on the first page for the keyword phrase T is very low because there's so many products competing to rank T. But as you start adding words, this is what's called a long tail keyword. So for instance, high caffeine tea is much more specific and it's a lot easier to rank at the top of the search results for high caffeine tea. So that's where this word count comes in. High caffeine tea is three words. And so I recommend at least going for three words minimum on any of the search phrases because something like Chinese tea, that's only two keywords, is also gonna be way too competitive. So let's apply these filters and see if it helps to narrow down the results. So now we're down to about 3000 keywords. The next thing I recommend doing is sorting by this magnet IQ score. And this is Helium 10's score on how good of an opportunity it thinks every keyword is. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go through these results and look at products. For instance, this one right here, Blushberry Black Tea, it has 16 sales per month. And what you can do is you can click on this little box right here and it'll pull up the search results in Amazon. And when I look at the results here, none of these products are obviously Blushberry Black Tea. So what I would do is make my own product that obviously has the words Blushberry Black Tea in big letters and make sure that that phrase shows up in my title. And I don't see the, that phrase in any of these titles right here, which means that it's a really good opportunity. Now, if you have absolutely no idea of what product you wanna sell on Amazon, Black Box is a great tool for you because all you do is you put in some different information here and this tool will show you all the related products being sold on Amazon that fit your criteria. So for instance, let's say, as I mentioned, we want something that's between $15 and $85. And let's say we want a product that's making at least $10,000 per month. We also wanna make sure that the product that we're competing against isn't already super successful, that it doesn't already have a ton of reviews. So we can go over to this review count and say to this tool, only show us products that have a hundred or less reviews. Now we're gonna select a category and let's just go with grocery and gourmet again, even though, as I mentioned, there's a lot of other categories that you can sell in. We're gonna go down here and we're gonna click search. And we can see all these different products on Amazon that even though they have less than 100 reviews, they're making at least $10,000 a month in revenue. We'll then use this for inspiration and try to figure out how we can make a better product. Right here, I see a collagen sparkling tea. And collagen is one of those trends that are really popping off right now. So I'd use this as an idea of, hmm, how can I make my own collagen product that would come up on the search results? So at this point, what I would personally do is go back to that magnet tool type in collagen right here, apply all the different filters that we talked about, and then click apply filters and go through all these different results and look for opportunities, look for things that people are searching for in Amazon that when you click on the search results in Amazon, there's nothing for. So for instance, collagen powder chocolate, 
When I look here, this is super competitive. I would absolutely avoid this because there's not a real opportunity. But I guarantee you, if you go through all thousand of these filtered keywords, there'll be something on there that people are searching for in Amazon that when you look at the search results, there's not any products that are directly related to that search. So use these methods to figure out how you can create a product. And this Helium 10 tool is extremely powerful. Again, you can click the link down below to sign up for a free version. But some of the features for this tool, you do need to upgrade to the paid version. And when you click on the link below, you'll get a huge discount on this tool. Plus this product has a seven day trial so you can always use it and if within the first seven days you don't find a winning product, feel free to cancel it and get 100% of your money back. But my number one tip for product research is find a product that you're actually passionate about to sell on Amazon. Because if you're passionate about the product that you're selling, you'll have a huge advantage over the competition. That's a quick version of how you do product research. But if you want the real secrets that I use to find my own passion products, I do have a program called the Passion Products Formula. I'll put a link to it down below. This is an in-depth program where I go into even more detail than I can get to in this video right here about every every single step of the process of creating your own Amazon FBA business. But after you found a product, I recommend that you go and find a manufacturer for your product. And there are three most common ways to find a manufacturer or supplier for the product that you're going to sell. The first one is Alibaba.com. And you can go to Alibaba.com and type in whatever you're looking to find a manufacturer for. And Alibaba allows you to find manufacturers and suppliers overseas, primarily in China, but in a lot of other countries as well. And when you hit enter, it'll give you a list of thousands of different suppliers and manufacturers for your product. For pretty much any product you can think of that could be manufactured overseas, all you have to do is type in what you're looking for and this will give you a list. The second most common way to find a manufacturer, especially if you're looking to find a manufacturer in the United States, is to use thomasnet.com. And this is very similar to Alibaba, but it'll allow you to find manufacturers in the US. You can see here, if you type in T, it gives you a list of over 191 tea suppliers. What you would do is contact every single one until you find a supplier that works for you. The third most common way to find a manufacturer is to go to Google and type in whatever you're looking to get a manufacturer for with the word manufacturer afterwards. For instance, my first passion product, which is a product that I've made over a million dollars with, this is how I found a manufacturer. I went to Google, I typed in what I was looking to make, which was a type of nut butter, and then space manufacturer. And you can see here, there are hundreds of different people that can manufacture nut butter for you. But let me show you right now the first most common way that people find manufacturers or suppliers for their product. And that is to use the website like Alibaba.com. And as I mentioned, you're gonna type into the search bar whatever you're looking to purchase. Then another secret is you're gonna wanna go down here and you're gonna wanna click Trade Assurance and you're gonna to wanna to click Verified Supplier. And by clicking Trade Assurance, Alibaba will only show you companies that are enrolled in the Trade Assurance program. This means that when you pay one of these manufacturers for the product that you're gonna be purchasing, Alibaba guarantees that you're actually gonna get what you pay for. And the way they do this is they actually hold some of the money that the supplier is gonna get. And if there's ever an issue, you can easily get a refund on whatever you purchased on this website. Verified Supplier, on the other hand, means that Alibaba has sent out a third-party inspector to actually go and verify that this manufacturing facility, this supplier is actually a legitimate company that they actually exist. And I know a lot of people are nervous about sending money overseas to these manufacturers, but if they have trade assurance and they're a verified supplier, there's nothing to be afraid of because if there's ever an issue, Alibaba will give you your money back. Now, instead of looking right here, which right now we're seeing all these different types of products, that's not really what we really care about. What we really care about is clicking on this button right here called all suppliers. And this will show us all the different suppliers. Now, I'm gonna be using the word supplier and manufacturer somewhat interchangeably, but technically a supplier is someone that supplies you with a finished good, where a manufacturer is someone that actually is gonna be manufacturing the product from scratch. And when you click on all suppliers, you can see a list of every single tea supplier that is listed on Alibaba. And you're gonna go through this list and you're gonna figure out who you wanna contact to purchase your product. And you can click the contact us button. Some things to look for is you wanna see how long they've been in business. For instance, this company has been in business for five years, this business for eight years. You also wanna see how big they are and you can see the volume in sales that they're doing as well as how big their staff is. You can also look at their rating and reviews. This is a 4.9 rating with over 200 reviews. This is probably a very reputable company. You can then click on the supplier and learn more about what they do. You can look at their quality control process, their production capacity, R&D capacity, and much more information. And when you're ready to start working with them, all you have to do is click contact supplier. 
And even if you're looking to buy something that's not exactly what they sell on Alibaba.com, oftentimes they can customize the product for you. Now, for a product like tea, I don't wanna get it manufactured overseas. I actually wanna have this product manufactured in the United States. And this is what we're doing for Rocket Tea. And as mentioned with thomasnet.com, this is gonna show you suppliers that are in the United States. And it's very similar to Alibaba.com. You can see the location of where the manufacturer is. You can see what year they were founded and how many employees they have. And if you click on the manufacturer, you can see a lot more information than just that things such as their capabilities their certifications even diversity and all kinds of different things if you want to you can even call the supplier or visit their website now when working with u.s manufacturers for the first round it's fine to send out an email and just get a feel for if they can actually do the product that you're looking to do but once you start getting a little bit more serious i recommend giving these manufacturers a call because oftentimes even if they can't help you they might know someone else that can and this is part of the way i found my first amazon manufacturers i called one manufacturer and they said you know what we can't help you but i think bob over at bob's nut butter can help you. So don't be afraid to get on the phone and call manufacturers. Another way to find a manufacturer is to simply go to Google and you can type in whatever the product is you're looking for, space manufacturers, space private labelers, or even sometimes space suppliers. Again, start emailing them and getting on the phone. And you can see we have a list of a ton of different nut butter manufacturers. And if you're struggling to find a manufacturer, there are four other techniques that you can use to find a manufacturer. And as I mentioned, stick with me because I'm gonna share exactly how we found a manufacturer for my new product. But here's the secret, you can actually use a tool in Jungle Scout to find who is the manufacturer for almost any product on Amazon. You'll just go to suppliers here and then to the supplier database click on the company tab and type in the company that you're trying to figure out who their manufacturer is. So if I type in yoga mat into Amazon, I see a bunch of different yoga mat companies. One of them is this Gaim company right here. I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it into the Jungle Scout tool right here. And we're gonna click search. And you can see this company listed and you can see who their top suppliers are. So if you have competitors in your market and you wanna figure out who they're using as manufacturers, this is an absolutely amazing tool. And I do have the hookup with Jungle Scout. There's a link in the description down below as well as a discount. So if you are gonna sign up with Jungle Scout, I highly recommend using the discounted link in the description down below. But you can even, if you want to, search by ASIN. So instead of searching by company right here, we could take the ASIN number, which if we scroll down to the bottom, we can see the ASIN number and we can copy this and we can paste it in here. And you can find, like I said, the manufacturer for just about any product on Amazon. Now this tool isn't always 100% accurate, but it's very surprising how often it is accurate. Another way I highly recommend to finding manufacturers is to type into Google whatever your product is, space conventions. Go to the website of the convention that is in your industry and you can look at who are exhibiting. And you can either go to this convention yourself, walk around the convention and talk to everybody, or you can go to the list of people that are exhibiting at the convention. For instance, we see here, this is the 2023 exhibitor list, and there's a growing list right here. And you can contact each one of those people individually. Oftentimes at these kind of conventions, it's gonna be suppliers and manufacturers. Now I know a lot of people are not based in the United States. Maybe for instance, if you're based in the UK or in Europe and you're looking for a manufacturer that's based in your home countries, you can use websites like europages.co.uk to find a manufacturer in the UK or in Europe. And it's very similar to the way that Alibaba works. You would just type in whatever you're looking for a manufacturer for, scroll around and you can see, for instance, this manufacturers based in France and they're verified by europages.com you can click on their profile and you can navigate to find out more information about them but if you're still struggling to find a manufacturer my last piece of advice before I show you step by step how we actually found a manufacturer for our product is to hire somebody and you can hire a sourcing agent and this is one site makers row where you can hire a concierge service for about a thousand dollars and they are gonna be an expert in the industry and they're gonna help you to find a manufacturer. Now, Makers Row is a website that you can use to find manufacturers for on your own and it's about $400 a year or you can hire a concierge service. In addition to this website, you can just go to Google, type in whatever your product is, space, 
agent, and they'll be able to help you to find a manufacturer. Now, if you're still struggling, you can always go to LinkedIn and find people that are in your industry, send them a message and ask them if you could pay them for their time. And now that you know the basics on how to actually find a manufacturer for your product, I'm gonna share with you step-by-step step how Willem and I found a manufacturer for our new product. And this is Willem. He is the one that actually found the manufacturer for Rocket Tea. How did you find the manufacturer? So I emailed as many manufacturers as I could find all across the world. I copy pasted the same email template to all of them. Just, hey, I'm looking to kind of create this project. Could this be something that you and I could discuss? And uh, I sent it to 50 to 60 different manufacturers is copy pasting the email to all the different infos at or whatever email address I could find on the bottom of their websites. Sometimes I would fill out an online form if that's kind of what the website was steering me to do. I opened the website for every Google search I could find from like the first page to the 10th page of Google, opened them up in different tabs and just went through each one to email all of them separately. So there's some key things here. First off, he went to page 10 of Google, which a lot of people stop at the first page and like, I can't find a manufacturer. No, it's like, keep going all the way down. Right. I, and I assume you, did you have some kind of a list of who you had contacted? Yep, I made a bit of a, a like a spreadsheet of who I had contacted, who I hadn't contacted. Yeah. But I also found that not everybody replied to me. I didn't okay. get a reply to everybody. So the ones that didn't reply to me, I sort of wrote off as, not paying enough attention to me anyways and like I could have followed up with them and in some cases I did if I really identified their business as something that looked like I wanted to work with mm -hmm. but if they didn't reply to me I kind of didn't really want to work with them anyway so I kind of just in my own inbox kind of started to filter out who was who was worth kind of following up with anyways. And we'll share the exact email that you sent to everyone later in this video, but once you started contacting people, what did they respond to you? What did they say? Well, a lot of people that replied to me regarding my high caffeine tea project did not want to touch it. They no. were really not that interested. They were like, we don't do that. We don't add anything unnatural to our teas or we don't change our teas. Everyone was very, in the tea industry, it seemed to me that there was a lot of proud owners of these tea blending or these tea manufacturing places and they're very like, proud of where the tea comes from. They don't want to like mutilate their otherwise perfect blends of tea with my high caffeine tea kind of concept. So I got a lot of no's. I got a lot of people saying that they wouldn't do it, that they're not interested in doing it, that it was impossible to do it, that they didn't understand how it could be done. I actually, in my email, gave them links to the current high caffeine tea products that are out there. And I sort of was fishing for information of like, well, how did they do it? Like yeah. they did it. And I still kind of got like, I'm not sure how they did that. I even had one guy sort of tell me that I wouldn't be surprised if they're lying about it. Right. Like maybe they didn't actually do it at all. And they're just saying that they did because I don't understand how that could even happen. And the yeah. reason I bring all this up is a lot of people, when you're trying to manufacture a unique product, they might tell you it's impossible, but they don't know what they're talking about. Yep, yeah, sure. Well, I got on the phone with one team manufacturer who was pretty much trying to steer me away from this project altogether the page is trying to talk me out of it mm -hmm. saying like the only way that this can be done is if we spray the tea leaves slightly with water and by doing so we're going to ruin the integrity of the otherwise dry preserved loose leaf tea and then sticking the caffeine powder onto that slightly wet tea leaf you know we could run into an issue with like a rot or a mold or, mm -hmm. or a problem with the tea leaf now being slightly wet so he was like, this can't be done. That's the only way it could be done. And because we can't do that, therefore it can't be done. So when all these people were telling you it can't be done, how did you feel? Like, well, I was getting a little bit nervous because like I was really planning on this being my product and this right. being what I'm focusing on. And I already kind of started like a few other gears in motion to like help kind of support this product being coming to fruition. Yeah. So when I was hearing no from all these manufacturers, I was starting to think like, okay, well, could I get my tea bag like submerged with caffeine powder? Like yeah. I was trying to think of, like if there's other ways to do this, or I was even thinking like, could I put a caffeine tablet into the tea bag that would dissolve? Like I was, I was starting to think of like other options, but at the same time starting to get a little bit nervous that everybody was basically telling me like this wasn't going to happen or yeah. that they weren't going to help me or that like, you know, this isn't really what tea was meant to be like anyways. Right. I was getting kind of just discouraging news. So I was getting a little nervous. Yeah. I remember you telling me that you were kind of discouraged at one point during this entire process, but eventually you found one or two manufacturers that wanted to work with you. 
What was that process like and what kind of questions did you ask to the manufacturers? Yeah, so I finally started hearing back from one or two manufacturers that was like, I can help you with this. Uh, these were specialty tea blenders, like mm. people that would work with you on specialty teas. You know, if I was to say I really wanted like a cinnamon and orange flavored tea, like they would help me blend that. Yeah. So this tea blender was fine with me adding caffeine to my tea using a proprietary process that he still hasn't even told me about. I yeah. asked him recently because my tea is now being produced. I asked him if he could film my tea being produced right. so that I could use footage of my tea like going through the machine like as part of a video yeah. and he told me no because all of their machines are like top secret yeah so you know so he's doing his thing but questions that i asked him when he finally kind of presented himself as someone i could work with questions about how long it was going to take how like what the minimum order quantity i could use is and then the process of like putting that tea now into tea bags because it seemed like it was such a process to kind of create that tea in the first place i i was worried that every step of the process was going to be a big thing, but it ultimately wasn't. And one of the big issues I know that we faced and we talked about is, okay, well, so we have one manufacturer, can they do everything? And right. it turns out they can't, they can do most of it, but one thing that they can't do was the actual packaging that the tea bags go into. How did you find that person to make the actual packaging? Right. So I was interested to know like what his scope of work could be. Like if yeah. he could be like a one-stop shop for like all of my needs, but it turned out that just since he's like a very niche down specialty tea blender, he just blends the tea. And then the tea just sits there in a warehouse and requires packaging to be shipped in from a different packaging manufacturer. And then they take that packaging and they fill the tea with it. So he gave me a recommendation to a packaging house that they use that's actually just here in the United States mm -hmm. that has pretty low minimum order quantities. And um, even though I could have looked for packaging overseas that would have cost less, I went with his recommendation yeah, just to fine. sort of keep the process moving along. And I'm using the packaging company that he recommended. And at the beginning, a lot of times, even if you could save money by maybe going overseas or doing things like that, sometimes it makes more sense just to spend a little bit more money and make it easier. Now, obviously certain products you still want to make overseas, but with this kind of a product, your most expensive costs were the tea itself and, and the manufacturing, which kind of needs to be done. In, oh, it doesn't need to be done in the U.S., but it's very helpful to yeah. have it done in the U.S. I think so, yeah. Because the tea is essentially being like somehow caffeine powder being added to that and there's already kind of enough like warning label-ish things to worry about with having like so much caffeine in the tea and like I didn't, I felt more comfortable doing that in the United States as opposed to like somewhere else where I didn't quite know like what was going on and how much caffeine was really in it or where the caffeine came from. And like, I didn't want to do go into like unsafe territory with my high caffeine tea. So it helped me feel more comfortable that it was out of Florida with mm -hmm. someone that I could just call and speak with. And then in terms of the packaging, yeah, like I could have got the packaging done cheaper, but I have like a dedicated account manager who's talking to me about all of my graphic design issues and everything and, you know, the colors and how things can bleed and all of that stuff that I've never done before yeah. was much easier for me to do with someone here in the United States. And so just to keep in mind, some of the other questions that Willem mentioned is, what is the minimum order quantity? You always want to ask a manufacturer that. What was your minimum order quantity? Do you remember? Uh, well, for the tea bags itself, it was either 1,000 or 2,500. And there's a little bit of a price like discount if you go a little higher. Yeah. Another question you always want to ask too is, what are all the costs? Because sometimes the manufacturer's like, yeah, it costs $5 per unit. Minimum order quantity is only 100 units but they're not telling you about all the other costs. Did you ask what other costs there would be and what other costs were there? Yeah, so it did cost like a small amount to initially get the blend going, you know, yeah. for me to like hire him to create the blend. And then it cost a small amount for me to receive a sample of the tea from him. Do you remember how much those were? It was like maybe like $400 for him to like be hired by me to create the tea yeah. and then to get a sample of the tea made, which was about like, 20 servings of tea. I think that was like another like $100 or something. And I always recommend getting a sample of your product before you go spend thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars on a manufacturing run. The sample allows you to see, is this actually a product that you like or that right. you want to sell? Yeah. What was it like when you got the sample? What did you think about it? Well, the sample just came into like a, like a package with loose leaf tea. It was not individual tea bags yeah. and it smelled really great. Okay. It had a really nice smell to it. I was very excited about that. I could kind of see how it was 
dusted with caffeine powder, which was yeah. interesting. Yeah. And um, yeah, I brought samples actually to all the different coffee houses and tea shops in the town that I live in, in Montana. Mm. And I asked for their like more professional opinion of what they thought it tasted like and they give me some notes. Yeah. So I left samples with everybody and they all emailed me back telling me that it tasted great. Yeah. Um, so it was encouraging. And yeah. uh, I tried it, my family tried it, my friends tried it. And it tasted good and gave everyone like a nice, clean, smooth energy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was great. And one of the biggest things when trying to find a manufacturer is just reaching out to those manufacturers. Now, I do recommend whenever you can, especially if you're dealing with US manufacturers, pick up the phone and give them a call. But if that seems a little too daunting, you can always just send them an email. And we actually, we promised that we'd share the actual email that Willem sent. Do you want to share that? Yep. Sure. Through. So I, I wrote this and I just literally copy and pasted it to every different email. 60 different manufacturers. Yeah, same like exact one after message. the other, one after the other. And the email just said, hello, I am creating a brand of tea that aims to have close to 200 milligrams of caffeine per tea bag or serving. The tea will have more caffeine than is natural. Additional caffeine will need to be infused to loose leaf tea somehow. Do you have any process in which this can be done? A loose leaf tea product with 150 milligrams of caffeine, allegedly, for reference, is zest tea, which I gave a link for. Please let me know if this is something we can work on together and if you have time for a call to discuss this. What are your thoughts about sending that email versus calling people? Well, I basically just like copy pasted this to one after the other. I had all the different tabs open like yeah. for all the different like one through 10 Google search results. Yeah, yeah. So as soon as I sent it, I closed a tab. As soon as I sent it, I closed another tab. And I kind of just did this as a sort of a passive way of hearing back from somebody because I just figured like now I have this big net out there yeah. and they're going to get back in touch with me. But if there was a few companies that like really seemed like they would be perfect for what I needed, like they're website was like exactly kind of aligned with what my mission was yeah. then i would just call them gotcha. just to see if i could like just speak with somebody because it's always nice like i've never done this before so it's always nice to hear from somebody like why they think this can't be done or yeah. what process is involved in this or why it's going to cost a lot like this is where i learned that it's like the only way to do this was to get the tea wet and then like roll it in powder like that was not something that i learned like over email exchange yeah. that was something i just learned on the phone and that's another big thing that you were telling me is as you were contacting these manufacturers, you were learning a lot. Right. So then the next time you talk to a manufacturer, you seemed a little bit more knowledgeable, like right. a little bit more of an expert. Another thing that we didn't mention is that when you sent this email, you didn't use your regular you know, random Gmail account. You actually set up a specific email for sending out this email for a number of different reasons. Want yep. to talk about that? Yep. So I just, like, since I was going to sort of like blast out this email to so many different people, I made a Gmail account that was called like Special Blend 2000. And I used that email to send out to all these different people. And in doing so, I got signed up for a lot of newsletters uh -huh. that I also kind of expected would happen. So a lot of these tea manufacturers now are like putting me on their tea blending newsletters. And I didn't want that on my personal email. Uh -huh. And I also just wanted it to be sort of more like an anonymous email kind of because if they get it, an, an email from Special Blend, I could still give them a call as Willem oh. and it's sort of two different people. Oh, so smart. if I got information from somebody on email, I could use that information as Willem yeah. without them knowing that I'm actually kind of the same person. Yeah. So that's smart. Another thing that I would do, it's not necessary, but if you have a domain name, let's say you have drinkrockettea.com, you can have Willem at drinkrockettea.com be where the email is coming from. That's like next level professional, mm -hmm. but don't think that you need to do that. You can even just do a Gmail account that's just rockettea at gmail.com yep. and it sure. seems uh, professional, but I actually really like your idea of, you could send this emails from multiple different accounts even and uh, I, maybe, maybe just make sure that the price is gonna be the same or like you right. said, get on yeah, the phone exactly. and be like, hey, is this thing you told me actually true? So that's, that's a really smart idea. And I do have a free checklist that I recommend you go through when working with manufacturers. I'll put that in the link down below in the free Amazon FBA course. However, I go into way more detail in my Amazon FBA program, the Passion Products Formula. In this program, I give you sample templates that you can send to manufacturers, a much more in-depth checklist that you can use when working with manufacturers, and I give some more advice about how you can find and work with the best manufacturers. Once you've found a manufacturer, it's time to design your product. And this includes designing the logo, the branding, the product itself, every aspect of it. And the first step for you to design your Amazon FBA product is to design a logo. And there are a lot of different ways for you to design a logo for your Amazon FBA brand. 
Now, the mistake that most people make is they try to design the logo themselves. And unless you're a professional graphic designer, it's worth paying a little bit of money to hire a professional to do this for you. And I actually hired designers at different price points to test out how good of a logo they're gonna make. I hired one designer for around 10 to $20, and it was a terrible logo. I spent a little bit more money and started getting better and better logos, all the way up to I spent $800 on a logo, and I think, personally, it was the best logo that I got. But if you're looking to save money on creating a logo, you can go to fiverr.com. But be careful, because if you hire the cheapest person, you're gonna get a logo that looks like this. Now, if you do go through and take your time to hire a designer, for around $50, you could probably get a lot nicer of a logo, or you can go to a site like Upwork where you can find a designer that'll cost you anywhere from $50 all the way up to a few hundred dollars. And this is the logo I got when I hired an Upwork designer. For most people watching this video looking to get a logo professionally designed, I actually recommend 99designs. And I spent $800 on this logo. And what makes 99designs special is you get hundreds of different designers all submitting their designs to your campaign. So even if you don't really know what you want your logo to look like, you can tell designers what your product is about, who's your ideal customer, and they're gonna make a perfect logo for you. Now you don't have to spend 800 or $900 on a logo with 99 designs. They do have different packages. In fact, with Rocket T, we went with the silver package, which is the lowest end package, and we still got a really good logo design. And I do have links to Fiverr, Upwork, and 99 designs that will get you discounts. So if you're gonna use one of those services, click on the links down below in the description. After you have your logo, you're gonna wanna design the rest of your branding, including the packaging that you're gonna sell your product in. And warning, this is extremely important. You want to make sure that your packaging looks amazing because when people go to Amazon and they go to buy your product, they're gonna see an image of what your packaging is going to look like. And this is what's gonna determine whether or not they click on your product and ultimately purchase your product. And when designing your packaging, you can either hire the same designer that did your logo, or sometimes it's worth it to hire a different designer. And you can go to Fiverr, Upwork, or run another 99designs campaign to design your packaging. And this is what we actually did with Rocket T. We did another separate 99designs campaign just for the packaging, and this is what we ended up with. The third thing that you need to think about when designing your Amazon FBA product is to actually design the product itself. And how you design a product is gonna depend on what type of a product it is. For instance, with Rocket T, we just went to our manufacturer and we said, hey, this is the kind of product we're looking to create can you do it? And most manufacturers said no. But when designing your product, oftentimes the best way to actually design it is to contact the manufacturer that you wanna work with and see if they can help you to design it. This is also what I did when designing my first passion product, Performance Nut Butter. It was a food product. I've never designed a food product before, but the first thing that I actually did when designing this was just buy a food processor and start mixing different nuts together until I found a flavor that worked. Once I found a flavor that I thought was pretty good, I hired a manufacturer to see if this was a recipe that could scale. And for $700, they took my basic recipe and made it perfect for their machines so that it could scale. And if you're looking to create a product, but you're not an expert in this category, you can always hire an expert using Upwork, Fiverr, or just going to Google and searching for whatever your product's about space expert. And so whatever type of product that you're looking to create, there's someone online that can help you. Even if you're looking to create something that's a little bit more technical, you can hire someone to use AutoCAD or some kind of a 3D design software to create the product for you. And now I'm going to have Willem, my business partner for Rocket T, explain in depth exactly how we designed all aspects of this product, including the logo, the packaging, as well as the actual product itself. How did you come up and how did you get the logo and the packaging itself designed? Yeah, well, so that started off with the process of trying to figure out what my brand was going to be called first because the yeah. package and the logo would be kind of built around that. So to get the brand name, I used a thesaurus to like figure out if there was like a word that could really like nail in the head the concept or the, the idea of what I wanted to kind of convey, yeah. which is that drinking this tea was going to blast you off or you know, make you feel energy or like, like that was the idea. I also made a product launch group, which is something that Travis's course kind of coaches us to do, which is to have a group of friends and peers and also hopefully your ideal market to help you decide like what the best brand name would be. You could, they could give you feedback on like what your logo is, whatever. So I did this on Facebook and I started off with something like take off tea and then it went to like rocket ship tea and I was getting feedback from everybody in the group about like what they thought about that. 
And after a lot of interesting dialogue with everybody, we found that rocket tea was something that a lot of people enjoyed. And it was also the shortest. And it also, in my mind, was like an easy logo to create. And I could make marketing and branding around like space. And like it all kind of started to come together after we just after I decided on rocket tea. That's one of the benefits of why I recommend always creating some kind of a product launch group. So for anyone yep. that doesn't know, the product launch group is just as you're growing your tribe around your product, you get them into a Facebook group or get them into some place. It could be a Discord group, wherever, and you ask them questions because these mm -hmm. are going to be your potential customers. So you tell them, hey, I'm stuck between this idea, this idea, and this idea, and they'll narrow it down and they'll tell you, you know what, these two ideas suck mm -hmm. and they'll give you good reasons why they suck. You should go with this other one. I think it's very helpful. So the product launch group helps you to crowdsource and yep. get, instead of it just being your one brain, you get multiple different brains. But eventually yep. you landed on yeah, Rocket we landed on Rocket yeah. and then I used 99 designs to help me with the logo. And I had not used 99 designs before actually. Like I'd always used like Fiverr or like Upwork or something where there's like a specific job that I yeah. want, like a, a specific result from. But 99 Designs was great for my re purpose because I started a contest around what the logo could look like. Mm -hmm. And I got submissions, again, sort of like crowdsourcing, um, submissions from a lot of different designers of what they thought a good logo would be after I had made a detailed brief of what I was looking for. Yeah. So a lot of designers took the Rocket Tee and they made like a spaceship going around a planet or something like this. And the logo that I'm using now is a rocket ship with tea leaves coming out of the bottom of it as mm. though the tea leaves are flames. Yeah. And that's very cool. And that's actually not something that I thought of myself. That's right. not something I asked a designer to make for me. And then when I saw that, I was like, oh, that's actually a very cool idea. So I chose that designer as my winning contest. And then I started working with him closely about like how we could refine that logo to be what I wanted. But going into that contest, I didn't know that I would be leaving it with a rocket with tea leaves as a flame. Like that was a, a happy surprise for me. So that so 99 Design is cool for that reason. How much did it cost to do your 99 Designs campaign? That was like the like a silver package logo. Yeah, it's that, like three four hundred dollars. Yeah, three four hundred dollars to make the logo. After I had that good experience with 99 Designs for my logo. I went back to 99 designs, not the same designer because this designer is like a logo kind of specific designer, but I went back to 99 designs to help me with my package design. And I will say that some designers that do logos can do, like you can hire them outside of 99 designs to do your packaging. Yep. You can save a lot of money, but other designers, they don't know how to necessarily, they only do logos as Willem was talking about. So as you were mentioning, you went back to 99 designs because you had a good experience. You did another silver package, but this time to get your package design. Talk about right. that process and how that went. Right. Well, I did another contest again. Yeah. I did a contest like I did for the logo because I wanted to sort of see what everybody kind of came up with. That also surprised me in a, in a good way because the package I have now has elements and details on it that the designer kind of, you know, offered to me that I'd never really asked for. It was a really cool process to go through the contest again. A lot of people were submitting some ideas. One designer stood out more than the rest yeah. like as like the most professional the most easy to communicate with a lot of designers on 99 designs like don't necessarily speak english as their first language so it's nice when you can just kind of explain what you want and the designer kind of knows what you want so i had a good good experience with with this designer i used ultimately because we could communicate well together at the time i was designing this package with her learned more about the abilities that my uh package manufacturer had mm. which is that i could have like a matte black right. package with metallic finishes and gradients and all this stuff so as i realized that those features were available to me in the package design i then went to my designer and i said like let's make a really cool gradient like i want all the words to have this metallic kind of effect um, and then we like leaned into that to sort of like make the package look more like what it is now this is another really important thing if you're designing your packaging Make it look amazing and premium. So that was a big thing that we're doing different with Rocket Tea is we're making packaging as we'll show you right here that says high caffeine tea on it. It's black, so it's black with red writing. So it's a big contrast from the rest of the teas that are on there and the Amazon background. So if you're searching on Amazon for high caffeine tea and you see this product, you're gonna think, wow, this is exactly what I want and it looks premium. So those are some things to keep in mind as you're selling your product on Amazon is think about, is this something that when the customer sees the packaging, when the customer sees the product, are they gonna wanna click on it and buy your product? And Willem and his designer added a lot of elements to the packaging to make it 
a little bit more premium, a little bit nicer. Like what were some things that you added on the packaging that made it maybe stand out a little bit above other types of packaging? Mm -hmm. Well, I was going for like a very obvious package, like yeah. Travis was mentioning, sort of like if you're looking for high caffeine tea, like this is the choice yeah. that you should make. Um, so we did a matte black finish, we had gradients, we had kind of metallic colors. And also I had a on the back kind of a caffeine content meter that sort of did a comparison of all the other products like green tea, black tea, matcha, energy drinks, and then how high the caffeine content of rocket tea is, which is 200 milligrams per tea bag. So I kind of had fun with that. And on the package, it says the highest caffeine tea in the universe. Yeah. You know, we, we sort of just like really claimed like the most caffeine ever sort of accolades. So that's how Willem designed the logo in the packaging. Any other things that you'd talk about? Any other tips for people out there that are designing their logo or their packaging? Well, yeah, I would get started with a product launch group or, you know, it's, it's just like asking your friends for advice. Like that's really kind of what the idea is. And you might think that you have a really clear idea of what it should be and you run it in your own head and it sounds good and it rolls off your own tongue. But, you know, you could just ask somebody what they think and they could just have a very great point of why maybe you should think differently. Yeah. So just get feedback from a lot of different people. Uh, I like using 99designs. I would recommend doing that. I'd recommend using the contest because you get to see a lot of different submissions of things that you might not have thought of yourself. And then you can even take that submission and kind of maybe you recognize a different designer and you can say, okay, we'll look like, I like you, but I kind of want this idea. Yeah. And you could kind of work with them in that way. And I'll put a link to 99designs down below with a discount. So if you're gonna use 99designs, use that link down below. So now we talked about the logo in the packaging. The other part of designing your product is actually designing the product. And let's talk a little bit about how you went down the path of designing the actual tea. What was the process like on actually making the flavors and all that. Right, so my tea manufacturer is asking me a lot of questions about like how he, how I wanted it to taste, what he could offer me. And I was going back and forth with him a lot about what kind of tea I wanted. And I drink a lot of tea, so I, I know what kind of tea I like. Mm -hmm. But then to go again, like back into that sort of uh, product launch group yeah. sort of thing, like I don't wanna ask everybody like what's your favorite tea? Cause I would just get overwhelmed with different opinions and different answers. That's one thing. Like when you're making a business and you're asking these questions, everybody has an opinion. You know, when you ask them for somebody's opinion, they're gonna give it to you. So I kind of didn't want to get like overwhelmed with too many different opinions. So I actually just went back to my manufacturer and I said, what tea do you sell the most of? Like what's your most popular tea? What's your most like Art. high selling, most popular tea? Like what date, like, you know, you have the data. Like, yeah. you know, I don't want to tell you that I want to create like some, cinnamon cherry tea like i have no idea so he just said like this is my best selling tea which is a passion fruit black tea yeah. and i said let's just run with that then and he also said that coincidentally and good for me that the passion fruit black tea the flavors that are already in that are the best for masking mm. the high caffeine content that's already that, that we're adding to it because caffeine itself is a little bit bitter like in its pure form so finding a tea that tastes great and also kind of masks that flavor, it turned out passion fruit black tea was like that exact tea. And this is a key point. When you're first launching a product, a lot of people want to come out with 10 different flavors all at the same time. Mm. Do not do that. Start with one specific SKU, which stands for stock keeping unit. It's like one flavor, one color, one whatever you're going to do, just test the market. And the reason, there's a lot of reasons for this, but one is if you have multiple different products, it's almost like running multiple different businesses because mm. one might go out of stock and you have to order more of that one. Then the next day, the other one goes out of stock. And a lot of times manufacturing companies will make it so if, if you have to order 10 pounds of tea, now you have to order 10 pounds of every single flavor. So your startup costs are gonna go up by a lot. Right. I also think it was really smart that he picked the most popular one. Don't, I mean, there's times where you wanna go really niche and, and things like that, but your product's already niche. It's already high caf highest caffeine tea in the world. So it makes sense to do a flavor that is very popular. Right. And the third thing is passion fruit, passion product, Perfect. Yeah, it was just perfect. Yeah. great, great, great coincidence aligned. there. <laughs> so once you decided on what the flavor was going to be, what was the next step? So the next step after deciding what the flavor was going to be was that my tea manufacturer is going to have to then take this flavor, do his process to add the caffeine to it, and then send to me a sample. He basically made this high caffeine tea and then mailed to me a sample. And the sample was just loose leaf tea in a bag. It wasn't like individually tea bags or anything like that. 
and I had to sort of measure it out on my own. He actually was like, he sent me a nice box though, actually, like it had a scale in it and a brochure in it, like kind wow. of a nice little thing. And he told me like, this is how much you should weigh out. This is how long you should steep it for. Um, so I kind of followed his instructions and I sampled the tea and I gave samples to a lot of different tea houses and coffee shops where I felt like people would kind of know a lot about tea yeah. and could actually give me some like constructive criticism or some feedback that was worthwhile. And uh, yeah, I just tasted the tea and gave it to all my friends and family and some of these like kind of professionals around me. The key thing is, if you if you didn't like the sample, you could have ordered, you could have said, okay, I'm gonna make this tweak and this tweak. Luckily for you, it seems like you liked it right out of the gate. So yeah. that worked out well. It was it was good right out of the gate. And even if I would have wanted to maybe make a change or something like this, like out of my own personal taste, I was still just trying to like trust that this was the tea that everyone liked. You know, yeah. like he is a tea manufacturer. He produces this tea the most. He, he makes more sales of this tea than any other tea. So even if like I had a thought around it or my mom had a comment about it, I just kind of still wanted to like trust that like, well, he says that this is the best tea. This is the most popular tea. So like, let's just go with it. And you know, it tasted fine. It tasted great. Another thing you want to think about when designing your package is you want to mock it up and you want to see what it looks like. And you want to talk about that process? Yep, sure. So I was actually in Mexico City at the time that I was doing this process. And I went to a grocery store in Mexico City with a measuring tape and literally tried to find like a bag of cereal or trail mix or like something that had the exact measurements of what my product was going to be like and i found a bag that was like pretty much the same and it was trail mix that's why that was in my head and um i went to a place in mexico city that made vinyl stickers like custom made vinyl stickers and i had them made a vinyl sticker of my uh package logo or, or package design and I literally peel the sticker and put it over that bag of trail mix that I had. Yeah, right here. So this will actually get you to see in your hand what your design looks like. So as you're designing it, don't just go based off the computer images. Do what Willem did. Go out in the real world and, and, and get a real product that you can put the stickers on. Right, yeah. And this was something that I thought I could use like to start populating my website with images. Or no. I wasn't sure if I would like use this to... like. Get ungated on yeah, Amazon. Get ungated on Amazon. Yeah, get so, temporary photos. There's so many. There's so much use for this. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So this this is just a like a bag of Mexican trail mix with stickers on it. Again, as a reminder, one of the most important parts of creating your brand is to get lots of feedback, to get a lot of people to look at your logo, to look at your branding. If you are looking to get feedback on your logo and your branding, part of the Passion Product formula is we do have a private. Facebook group that's just for people that have joined the program. And what a lot of students will do is they'll post their logo, they'll post their branding and get feedback from everyone that's in the program. So if you are looking for a little extra help with your branding and your logo, I recommend again joining the program. Now let's talk about how to set up your Amazon FBA business legally. And when setting up your Amazon FBA business legally, there are five steps that you're going to need to do. The first step is to start a business entity. This could be an LLC, a DBA, or an S-Corp. And I'll explain what those three things are, which one you should choose, and how to get them later in this video. The second step is to get your EIN number, and EIN stands for Employer Identification Number, and this is free to get, and I'm gonna show you how to do that later in this video. Third step is to get a seller's permit, and depending on what state you live in, you may or may not need to do this step, but this is also free to do. Step four is to get a business bank account, and step five is to get a business credit card. Warning, these steps are easy to do, but make sure you stay till the end of the video, because if you miss one of these steps, the IRS could come knocking on your door and ask you for the proper paperwork. And before I go into the first step and explain to you how to set up your own business entity, I do wanna let you know that in one week, I'm gonna be opening up my Amazon FBA program, The Passion Product Formula. And there's only gonna be 50 spots available to join this program because I wanna make sure that it's only a small group of people that can join so I can give as much one-on-one -on -one time to every single person that joins. So click on the link in the description to join the waitlist for this program because when you do that, you'll get to learn more about this program and you'll be the first one to know when I actually open this program so you can make sure that you join before the spots fill up. But now let me explain to you how to set up your Amazon business from a legal standpoint. And the first step is to set up a business entity. And there's three different types of business entities that I recommend you use. Either an LLC, 
a DBA, or an S-Corp. There are other types of business entities out there, but for 99% of the people watching this video, an LLC, a DBA, or an S-Corp are going to be the right option for you. A DBA stands for doing business as, and this is the most affordable way to start a business entity. And it allows you to get the paperwork to open up a business bank account under whatever business name that you wanna use. The con with a DBA is it doesn't provide any type of legal protection. On the other hand, an LLC, which stands for Limited Liability Company, gives you a lot more protection. Basically, if someone ever tried to sue your business, it separates your business from you. Or if your business is a DBA and someone sues your business, they can actually come after your personal assets. The con with a limited liability company is it costs more money to open, and it can range anywhere from around $150 all the way up to $800, depending on what state you live in. And for Rocket Tea, we actually went with an LLC because this is a product that people are going to consume. There's always a chance that someone has a negative reaction and they want want to sue the company and we wanted to make sure that there was legal protection between the company and ourselves. And for this business, I partnered with Willem, who is a random student in my Amazon FBA program, The Passion Products Formula, and he decided to register his LLC in Wyoming. And to do that, we went with wiregisteredagent.com and it cost around $150 to file, plus we had to pay another $150 to the state of Wyoming. On the other hand, when I created my first passion product company, Performance Nut Butter, because I live in California, it's a lot more expensive to start an LLC. It cost around $250 for me to submit my LLC through LegalZoom, and then I had to pay the state of California another $800. In fact, in California, every single year, you have to pay California $800 just to have an LLC, whether or not your company makes any money. The other type of business that you can create is what's called an S-Corp, or a small business corporation. And this has some small tax benefits, but there are some other requirements that make it kind of a pain to start an S-Corp. What I recommend for most people deciding between an LLC or an S-Corp is to choose the LLC but when you fill out your paperwork, you can choose to be taxed as an S-Corp. So this gives you all the benefits of an LLC, plus it gives you the tax benefits of an S-Corp. However, if you're not worried about being sued and you don't think you're gonna make that much money with your business and you just wanna do it in a very affordable fashion, a DBA is fine for new entrepreneurs. Step two is to get your EIN number, which is basically like a social security number for your business. When you file taxes and do other business related things, you're going to need this number and it's free to get. You're just gonna go to this website right here and I'll put a link to this website in the description down below and you're gonna follow step by step this process. Again, it's completely free. Step three is to get a seller's permit, which is also free to do. You're just gonna to go to Google, type in whatever state your business is located in, space seller's permit. Now you'll see a lot of people that wanna charge you money to help you to set up your seller's permit. Do not pay for this. Same thing's true if you file your business with LegalZoom or other services, they're gonna to try to upcharge you and make you pay for a seller's permit. Do not pay for this, it's free and easy to get. You can see right here that the first actual result in Google says obtaining a seller's permit. Click on that link and you're gonna go through and you're gonna apply for your seller's permit. And you need a seller's permit for a few different reasons. First off, it allows you to pay state sales tax. In California, for any product that I sell in California, I need to collect and pay California that state tax. The second thing getting a seller's permit allows you to do is it allows you to buy items and not have to pay tax on that. Specifically, if you're buying products that you're then going to resell, your state is not gonna have you pay taxes on anything that you're purchasing that you're then going to resell. So this will allow you to save some money on your costs of goods. And I actually asked Willem, did you get a seller's permit? And this was his response. In this case, I did not get a seller's permit at the moment. Um, I'm based in the state of Montana and Montana kind of has like a different sort of sales tax situation. Also, my LLC is based in Wyoming. Um, so when I was kind of researching this in the beginning, if I remember correctly, I didn't need one in my case. Step four is to get a bank account. And when I asked Willem how he set up the bank account for Rocket T, this is what he said. When I was visiting a friend in Boulder, Colorado, I just went into his uh, Chase branch. I brought in my LLC paperwork. I brought in my EIN number and I, just talk with them about what my best options were for opening a business bank account or which credit card specifically I'd be able to open that day. And setting up a business bank account is very easy. You just bring in your paperwork to the bank. If you have a DBA, you'll bring in that paperwork. If you have an LLC, you'll bring in that paperwork. Plus, as I mentioned, your EIN number as well. I recommend going with US Bank. They have a free business bank account, but Willem went with Chase Bank. So do some research and see what the best bank for you is. I also recommend setting up your business bank account as soon as possible so you can keep your business and your personal expenses separate. That way you can track all your business expenses and you can write all those off 
on your taxes. Warning, this is another thing that you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to. You really wanna make sure you keep your personal and your business expenses separate because if you have an LLC, but you start using your LLC for personal expenses and someone sues you and the judge sees that you're using your LLC to pay for personal expenses, you may not end up having any kind of legal protection and someone may end up being able to come after your personal assets. So the answer to this is just to make sure that you keep your business and your personal bank accounts and credit cards cards and all expenses separate, which leads me to step five, which is getting a business credit card. This is the best part about opening up a new business is you get to open up business credit cards, which are going to give you free flights, free hotel stays, tons of miles and points. And Willem signed up for the Chase Inc. card. I'll have a link to that down below. But I generally recommend the Amex Gold card for new business owners because the Amex Gold card gives you 5x points on a category of your choice. I generally pick advertising, meaning for every dollar I spend, I get five times the points on advertising. But I'll put a list of my favorite business credit cards in the description down below. A lot of these credit cards will have a bonus that if you spend $3,000 in your first three months, they'll give you 50,000 all the way up to 75,000 points, which is enough points to get you a round trip ticket to just about anywhere in the world. There are also other legal things that you're going to want to consider when starting your Amazon business. Like, do you want to get a patent or do you want to get a trademark? And for most businesses out there, you're not going to really be able to get a patent. But if you do think that your product is something that does deserve a patent, you can always file for a provisional patent, which costs you around $75 and it's good for one year from the time that you submit it. A real patent, if you go through and you hire a lawyer and you go through the entire process, is gonna cost you around $10,000 at least. So for most entrepreneurs, I don't recommend getting a patent. And for most products out there, you don't even really qualify for a patent. There is two different types of patents. There's a utility patent and there's also a design patent. On the other hand, for most Amazon entrepreneurs, I do recommend filing for a trademark. And a trademark is where you claim that you own a certain logo or a certain phrase and that no one else can sell a product that contains that logo or that phrase. And it costs around $275 to file for a trademark. Once you have all the legal paperwork done, for starting your Amazon business, the next step is going to be to create your Amazon seller account. The first step to starting your Amazon seller account is to go to sell.amazon.com and you're going to click on the sign up button. But warning, be careful because there's actually two different ways that you can sell on Amazon. You can sell with the professional plan, but that's going to cost you $39.99 a month. Or you can sign up with the individual seller account, which is free to sign up for. And to get there, you have to scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page and click on this button that says sign up to become an individual seller. They kind of hide this feature and this is a good hack to save a lot of money, especially if you're just starting out on Amazon. And the truth is you can always upgrade your account from an individual seller to the professional plan later on. But the problem with the individual seller account is you have to pay an extra 99 cents for every product that you sell on Amazon. So if you plan on selling 40 or more items, I recommend going with the professional plan up here. Plus the professional plan comes with a lot of other features that we're gonna talk about later in this video. And I actually chose the professional selling plan for my newest Amazon business, Rocket Tea. And I'm gonna be showing you a real example of how to sign up for an Amazon account using Rocket T as a case study. And I recommend to most of my students to sign up for the professional plan when they're creating their Amazon seller account. And the good thing is Amazon's only gonna charge you for the first month that you sign up and they're not gonna charge you again until you actually start selling products on Amazon. And you wanna make sure that you sign up for your Amazon seller account a few months before you actually plan to start selling on Amazon because sometimes there's delays in getting your account approved and you wanna make sure that when you're ready to start selling, your account is fully approved. Now a huge warning, there's five mistakes that people commonly make when signing up for their Amazon seller account that ends up leading to them getting banned from being able to sell on Amazon and makes it so their Amazon seller application gets denied. And I'll be sharing all five of those common mistakes in this video. And the first mistake that people make is when they click on the sign up button is they create a new Amazon account even though they have an old Amazon seller account. Amazon will see this and say, wait a minute, are you trying to start a second seller account? And that is not always allowed. There are situations where it's okay to have more than one seller account, but I always recommend if you already have a seller account to contact Amazon from that seller account and ask for permission to start a new seller account. If you already have a personal account with Amazon, you can log in. Or if you're creating a new account because you wanna keep your personal and your business account separate, you can click on the create your Amazon account button. 
You're then gonna put in your name. You're also gonna put in your business email. And this is the second mistake that people make. I recommend when signing up for your Amazon account to use a real business email at your domain name. I would personally avoid using a Yahoo or a Gmail. But to be honest, for Rocket Tea, we ended up using my business partner's personal Gmail account and our Amazon seller account still did get approved. But if you do have a real business email set up, I would use that. After that, you're gonna put in a secure password and you're gonna click next. And now you're ready to start your Amazon seller application. Amazon will tell you everything that you need to have ready and you're gonna scroll down and you're gonna click begin. And the next question Amazon's gonna ask you is where is your business location? And you can sell on Amazon US no matter which country you live in. I'd say about 50% of all my Amazon students are international, but in this case, we are located in the United States. Amazon will then ask you, what is your entity type for your business? And there are a few different options here. The most common answer to this question is either privately owned business or none, I'm an individual seller. So if you have an LLC, DBA, or an S Corp, you're gonna click privately owned business. On the other hand, if you are just an individual seller using your social security number, you're gonna put none, I'm an individual seller. And if you are outside the United States and you're looking to sell inside the United States, I recommend opening up an LLC using a website like wyregisteredagent.com. And this is what Willem did, my business partner for Rocket T. Even though he is a United States citizen, he spends about half the year in Mexico and the other half the year in Thailand. So we use wyregisteredagent.com to open up an LLC in Wyoming. And for this example, we're gonna click on privately owned business. You're then gonna put in the business name as it appears on the documents. And click on I confirm that my business location type are correct. We're gonna scroll down and click on agree and continue. You'll then put in your company registration number and you're gonna get this once you apply for your LLC or your DBA. You'll also fill out your registered business address and this is wherever your business is registered and you're gonna put a phone number that they can use to verify that you are a real person. After that, you're gonna put some information about you or whoever the primary contact person is for this business. Generally speaking, it's gonna be you. And you'll put your country of citizenship and your country of birth as well as your date of birth and you're gonna scroll down and they're gonna ask you how you wanna prove your identity. And if you have a passport, I recommend going with a passport. If you do not, you can always use a driver's license. You'll then select the country where your document was issued and they're gonna ask for your passport number and the date of expiration. They'll also ask for your residential address and you'll fill out this information right here. And if you're the one that owns this business, you're gonna click on confirm if primary contact person is the beneficial owner of the business. If you're opening a business for a different person, you'll select this other option down below. If you've added all the business owners, you'll go ahead and click yes. If you've not added all the business owners, click no, and Amazon will ask for some more information about all the business owners. You'll then check on this box and click the next button. For the next section, you're gonna need a valid bank account number as well as a valid credit card. And this is the third most common mistake that gets people denied from being able to sell on Amazon and sometimes even banned. If you try to use a debit card or a prepaid credit card, oftentimes Amazon will not accept that and they will ban you and they're not gonna really tell you why. So make sure that you have a valid credit card. Sometimes there are workarounds and I'll do a future video talking about some of those workarounds. Well then click continue. You're then gonna add a bank account and it's gonna ask you whose name is on the bank account. Is it your personal name or is it the business name? If you do have a business bank account and the business name is the same name as your LLC, you'll click on that button. But if the bank account is in your personal name, you'll click on your personal name. But then you're gonna select which bank is your financial institution associated with. And Willem chose to go with Chase Bank, but usually I recommend going with US Bank because they have free business banking and not all banks have free business banking accounts. If you're not in the US or you're traveling, you can always open up a bank account with Payoneer or World First Bank. You're then gonna put in your routing number as well as your bank account number. And if you have any checks, the routing number is gonna be the first nine digit number and then the bank account number will be the second number on the check. You'll then scroll down and click on verify bank account. You're then gonna put in your credit card information for your monthly subscription fee. And as a reminder, they're only gonna charge you this once and they're not gonna charge you it again until you start actively selling on Amazon. So you'll scroll down and you'll put in your credit card number, the expiration date and the card holder's name. You're then gonna scroll down and click next. At this point, you're gonna put your store's name and your store name can be whatever you want it to be. I recommend having it be the same as your LLC, but it doesn't need to be. If you want it to instead be the same name as your product, that's okay as well. In this case, we're gonna put the name Rocket T as the store name. 
And this is the name that people are going to see on Amazon when they buy our product or they come to our store. Amazon's then going to ask you, do you have universal product codes? And a UPC code is the barcode that's on just about every single product in the world. When you go to Walmart or you go to a store and they scan that barcode, that is the UPC code. So if you're selling products that you bought from a retail store, they're already gonna have a UPC code. But if you're selling your own product, a brand new product like a private label product or a passion product, which is what I recommend selling on Amazon, then you're going to need to buy your own UPC code. And you can go to gs1.org and click on get your barcodes to buy barcodes. And you can buy one single barcode for as cheap as $30. And for Rocket Tea, we did buy UPC barcodes through GS1, so I'm gonna select yes. It's then gonna ask you if you have any diversity certifications for your business. And if you are minority, women, veteran, or LGBT owned business, I recommend applying for one of these diversity certifications because Amazon sometimes does highlight these certifications in the search results. However, in this case, we do not have any of these certifications, so I'm gonna select no. The last question is, are you the manufacturer or brand owner for any of the products you want to sell on Amazon? And we are the brand owner. Even though we're not the ones actually manufacturing it, we own the brand. So in Amazon's eyes, we're gonna select yes for this answer. Another question that they'll ask is, do you own a government registered trademark for the branded products that we're going to sell on Amazon and we do we did apply and received a trademark for this product so I'm gonna select yes then we're gonna click on the next button and it's gonna take us to the final screen where we're going to verify all our information and as we scroll down it's gonna ask us to upload our passport you can take a high quality photo or do a scan of your passport and upload it here it's also gonna ask us for proof of our address and there's a few different ways to do this. You can do a bank account statement or a credit card statement. You can print that off as a PDF and upload that document here as well. You're then gonna select next, and this leads us to the fourth mistake that people make when applying for the Amazon seller account. And that's not being patient. Sometimes it does take a little bit of time for Amazon to approve your account. In fact, with our account for Rocket Tea, they actually ended up scheduling an interview with Willem where he went and he had to prove that he was who he said he was. He had to hold up a picture of his passport and they asked him a few different questions just to verify that everything he said was legitimate. It doesn't always happen, but sometimes they do ask to interview you before they approve you for your Amazon seller account. And as long as you are a legitimate person trying to sell on Amazon, you'll usually go through the interview absolutely fine. And before I get into the fifth common mistake that people make that ends up leading to them getting banned from being able to sell on Amazon, let me quickly show you some of the pros and cons of the individual versus the professional selling plan. So as I mentioned, with the professional selling plan, there is a $39.99 a month fee. However, as I also said, there's a 99 cent fee per item that you sell if you do the individual plan. That's why, again, if you're gonna sell 40 or more items, just go with the professional plan. Because on top of that, the professional plan comes with all these other features that we're gonna go over. For instance, if you have the professional plan, you can manage inventory using spreadsheets and reports, which makes it so that if you're uploading a lot of items, it's gonna make it a lot easier. There's also some other advantages to being able to manage inventory using spreadsheets. For instance, you have a lot more control when you're uploading your item using a spreadsheet, and it makes it easier to change certain things. You're also able to manage orders using the orders reports and order related feeds if you have a professional plan. If you have the professional plan, you can also set your own shipping rates for your products. And this is really helpful if when someone buys a product on Amazon, you're gonna be the one shipping it out. Now this is called FBM, which stands for Fulfilled by Merchant. And it's one of the two different ways that you can sell on the Amazon platform. The other way that you can sell on the Amazon platform is called FBA, which stands for Fulfilled by Amazon. And FBA allows you to send all the products that you wanna sell into the Amazon warehouse. And whenever you get a sale on Amazon, Amazon's going to pick, pack, and do all the shipping for you. If you enroll in the FBA program, it's also gonna make it so that all the products that you send into the warehouse are prime eligible. Meaning when people are scrolling on Amazon and they see your product, they're gonna know that if they buy it, they're gonna be able to receive it in just two days. And people are much more likely to buy prime eligible products. So I generally recommend using the FBA program, but if you are gonna be using the FBM program, that's another reason why you might want a professional seller account is so that you can change the shipping rates. 
You also get access to promotions and gift services. This allows you to sell your products at a discount and do special offers that are going to lead to you getting more sales. And there's a bunch of other things that you get with the professional selling account that you just don't get with the individual seller account. But the fifth most common reason why people get banned from selling on Amazon is as soon as they get approved, they go in and they change their credit card details. They change their bank account details. And this is a red flag to Amazon because Amazon's assuming that you're trying to trick the system. So do not change your credit card or bank details for at least a couple months after your account has been approved. Today, we're gonna to talk about something that will help you to protect your Amazon FBA product and brand. It doesn't guarantee that other sellers won't sell your product on Amazon, but it does give you an extra layer of protection when selling on Amazon. In fact, if you use this program, it's over 99% effective at stopping people from infringing on your product. It also gives you access to a ton of features that will give you the edge on selling your products on Amazon. Amazon created this program a little while ago, and it's called Amazon Brand registry but they've updated how you have to apply to brand registry and I'm going to show you how to do that in depth in this video and I'm going to show you why you need brand registry how to apply for brand registry and what to do after you have been approved for brand registry and applying for brand registry is crucial if you're going to be selling on Amazon and to sign up for brand registry you're going to go to brandservices.amazon.com and you'll sign in to the account that you want to apply for brand registry through and the reason I say it's crucial to sign up for brand registry before you start selling on Amazon is because all the features that this gives you. And we're gonna actually go down here and I'm gonna show you all the different features that you get when signing up for brand registry and show you why it's so important that you do it. And one of the first things that you get is access to A plus content. So let me show you what A plus content is. If you go to an Amazon product page and scroll down to the bottom, most products on Amazon just have a normal boring description that is text, but a plus content allows you to be able to put images, to put infographics, to really sell your customer. And when you have A plus content, it's gonna make it so that more people that go to your product listing are going to buy. And Amazon's gonna see this and it's gonna put your product higher up in the search results because it knows that every time someone clicks on one of your products, they're more likely to actually convert. A plus content also allows you to put videos on your product listing page, which again is gonna make it so people will watch your video and be even more likely to purchase your product. When you have brand registry, you can also report a violation. If someone is copying your product, if they're infringing on your intellectual property, you can report it to Amazon and Amazon will know that you're the actual owner of that copyright. And if there's ever people that are listing your product and it's a counterfeit of your product, you can remove those listings by letting Amazon know about that. Another big reason to be part of brand registry, if we scroll up here, we can actually see the new seller incentives and you'll get 5% back on the first million dollars in branded sales that you do. That's literally $50,000 that you're gonna get when you apply for brand registry. You're also able to enroll in the Vine program for free. Usually it costs $200, but if you're brand registered, you can do that for free. And the way the Vine program works is it allows you to get 30 trusted reviews. Basically, Amazon goes out and they find the people that are giving reviews most often and very comprehensive reviews, and they'll message them and say, hey, do you guys mind reviewing this product? And these people write out long, detailed reviews. Oftentimes, they include images. So this is a great program that you're getting absolutely for free. And then another feature is you can receive up to 2,000 free transparency codes, another $100 value. This allows that when you send your product into Amazon, you can put a special code on it, letting Amazon know that it's 100% authentic and anyone that sends a product in that doesn't have that transparency code, they might get flagged. And if they're trying to sell your product on Amazon, they won't be able to because it won't be an authentic version. You also get access to sponsored brands. And this is a way to advertise on Amazon. It shows up at the very, very top of the search results and it's a banner style ad. And so this is a way to set your product apart from others and another way to make more money. When you get brand registry, you can also set up an Amazon store. And this is a way to set up your own storefront on the Amazon website so that if people ever click on your name in your Amazon listing, they can go to your storefront and it's a custom branded store where you can show only your products and people can learn more about you as a seller. You can share your mission and about us and just some more information on why people should buy from you. This will also help you to increase your sales and get your customers to know a little bit more about you. 
The next feature is the customer engagement, and this is for brands who want to build better customer relationships. It allows you to increase retention and drive engagement by sending targeted email marketing campaigns. Now, I'm going to show you step-by-step step how to sign up for Brand Registry in just a minute, but I want to go over all these features first so you know why you're doing it, and also more importantly that once you get Brand Registry, you know how to properly utilize it. So we already talked about the video shopping and the, and the product videos, but another thing is this new feature called Amazon Live, and this is a new feature that Amazon's offering that allows brands to go live here on Amazon and share more about their products. So this is just another way to promote your products. This also gives you access to the subscribe and save feature. This is where you can offer a discount for anyone that buys your product and subscribes to your product so that they maybe get it delivered every single month, every two months, every three months. They can pick how often they wanna purchase and receive your product, but this allows you to let customers buy your product automatically and this is especially important if you have a product that people are going to eat or drink or somehow consume and you know that they're going to want to buy it again and again and it's a very helpful feature you also get access to amazon brand analytics and amazon brand analytics allows you to get a lot more insights and get a lot more reports on who you're selling to this includes search term reports where you can see what people are searching for in order to buy your products it also allows you to see the demographics of who's buying your product and here's all the different reports that you get you get item comparison report alternate purchase report market basket report all these different things and all this is going to help you to see not only who's buying your product but how they're finding you and why they're buying your product when you sign up for brand registry you're also going to get amazon attribution and this is crucial if if you're doing marketing off of Amazon itself. For instance, if you're doing Facebook ads, Google ads, social media, you can use Amazon attribution to track how many people are coming from TikTok to your actual Amazon listing and actually making a purchase. And a lot of people use this to run paid ads from off of Amazon to their Amazon listing and they can track and see how well are these actually doing? Is it actually resulting in sales? And speaking about making sales, the brand referral bonus is one of the most important parts of this entire program that a lot of people don't do. This is gonna make you more money because normally when you sell a product on Amazon, you have to pay a 15% referral fee. Meaning if you're selling a product on Amazon that's a hundred dollars, Amazon is gonna keep $15. But if you enroll in this brand referral bonus program, the referral fee goes from 15% down to 5%, meaning in the example I just gave, instead of Amazon charging $15 as a referral fee, they would only charge $5, which ultimately means more money for you, more money in your pocket. And this is a feature that's only available if you're part of Brand Registry. But one of the most important benefits of joining Brand Registry that they don't really mention is that by being part of Brand Registry, it's gonna help protect you from hijackers. And if you sell on Amazon, there's always a chance that someone will come onto your listing, start messing with things, start changing things around. And if you're part of Brand Registry, it allows you to escalate cases and show that you own this brand, that you're the one that's in charge and you basically have more proof that it's your product and it means that you're able to get all those kind of things fixed a lot faster and so in the long run it's going to stop hijackers from coming on your listing and making changes and last year there was over 2.5 million seller accounts that were fraudulent that this program has stopped and when you join brand registry there's a team at amazon of over 12,000 people that are dedicated to helping to protect you and basically give you an advantage over the competition so again if you're going to be selling on amazon you need to make sure you sign up for brand registry so let me show you how to do this and again you're going to go to brandservices.amazon Amazon.com. So we're going to click get started with brand registry and then you're going to click on get started and to get started there are three steps involved and there's three things that you're going to need. The first thing all brands signing up for brand registry must have are a pending or registered text-based or image-based trademark. So there's two different types of trademarks that you can get. One is image-based. Basically, this would be if you trademark a logo, a certain type of design. On the other hand, there are text-based trademarks. This is where you would trademark a word like Coca-Cola. No matter what font Coca-Cola is in, Coca-Cola has a trademark on the words Coca-Cola. On the other hand, for Rocket Tea, we did not trademark the words Rocket Tea because it was too competitive and there was other products out there that had similar style names, but what we did do is we trademarked the logo. So nobody in the world can use this logo except for us. And generally speaking, it's easier to get an image-based mark than it is a word mark. An example of this is for my first passion product company, Performance Nut Butter, I decided to get an image-based mark 
because I knew that if I tried to get performance nut butter as a word mark, it might cause some issues. Basically, the words performance nut butter are a little bit too generic, but my logo is very specific and it's very unique, so it was easier to get that as a trademark than it was just a bunch of words. The second thing you're gonna to need to be able to do is verify that you own the trademark, and this is easy. They're basically just gonna send you an email, you're gonna have a code, and you're gonna copy that code to show them that you are the owner of the trademark. And the third thing that you're gonna to need to do is have an Amazon seller account. Now, before I go into the next step, I know a lot of people have questions about how do I even get a trademark? And there are multiple different ways that you can get a trademark, but the most affordable way to get a trademark is just to go to uspto.gov and you can file for your own trademark. And to do that, you'll go over to trademarks and you'll click on apply online. You're then gonna follow the step-by-step -step instructions to apply for your trademark. It is so much easier than you would think it'd be. They ask you very basic questions, like what kind of category are you selling your products in? For instance, with Rocket Tea, we said we're gonna be selling it in beverages. Then they ask you to upload your image, as well as to write out the text that appears on your image. And it's gonna cost you around $275 if you apply online for your own trademark. However, if you don't wanna do this yourself, you can always hire a lawyer and that's gonna cost you an extra couple hundred dollars depending on the lawyer that you hire. Sometimes lawyers are gonna charge a thousand or two thousand dollars. Obviously, I think that's overpriced, but if it's helpful for you to pay an extra few hundred dollars to hire a lawyer, that is always an option. You can email me at travis at effectiveecommerce.com if you want a lawyer that I would recommend. But you can always just go to Google type in your city followed by trademark lawyer and it'll give you a list of people in your area who are good at doing trademarks give a bunch of them a call and see who's the most affordable that you think would be a good fit for helping you to get your trademark but once you've applied for your trademark and it's processing you can go ahead scroll down here and you can click to enroll now you're then going to pick which country you're located in and if you haven't yet make sure that you sign in you're then going to click on enroll a new brand there's a few things you're gonna need when applying for brand registry. You're gonna need the trademark number. You're also gonna need an image that clearly shows the branding of your product on the actual package that you're gonna be selling, which means that you need the finished product of the product that you are enrolling in brand registry. Or here's a secret hint, you can always just create a mock-up of that product. And that's what I did for Performance Nut Butter. I found some competitors' products that were relatively similar dimensions to my product, and I printed out stickers. I put those stickers on the packaging and I was able to fool Amazon into thinking that the product was already created even though we had not yet created it. You're also going to need a few other things but we'll talk about those as we go. You're then going to put in your brand name and it's important to note that the brand name is the same name that appears on your trademark. It doesn't have to be the same name that's your seller account and it doesn't have to be the same name that your title is for your Amazon product. So in this case we're going to put Rocket T. After that, you'll select a trademark office. And if you're in the United States and you apply through the USPTO, you're gonna select United States. Then you'll enter your registration or serial number. After that, you'll upload a photo of your product that clearly shows the brand on the product. Then you'll hit next. Next up, they're gonna ask you some information about your selling account. And you'll select whether you are the seller, a vendor, or if you're neither. 99% of the people watching this video, you're going to be a seller, meaning that you're selling your products directly to customers using Amazon Seller Central. However, if you are a vendor, meaning you sell your products to Amazon as a third party using Amazon Vendor Central, you use this, and if for any reason you're neither, then you can always select that. And you might select neither if you don't wanna sell on Amazon, but you still wanna apply for brand registry just to protect your products from being sold on Amazon. But again, for most of us, it's gonna be seller that you're gonna select. You're then gonna select the Amazon selling account that you wanna apply through. And you'll scroll down and you'll select what category best describes your product. In this case, it's grocery and gourmet food. Then Amazon requires you to provide your top selling ASINs for each product category where your brand is sold. So basically what they're looking for is you to put in the ASIN number of a product that represents the brand that you're gonna be using this brand registry for. And ASIN stands for Amazon Standard Identification Number. And all products being sold on Amazon have a unique ASIN. And when you create a new listing on Amazon, every single product will be assigned an ASIN. So one thing that you need to make sure that you do is that you create your product listing before you apply for brand registry. Even if your product listing isn't perfect, maybe you don't have the perfect main image or the perfect title, you need to have some kind of a listing. You're then gonna go into your Amazon seller account, you're gonna copy the ASIN number and you're gonna paste it here. Amazon also says that you can provide a URL to your brand's official website if you have a website. And this is optional, but if you do have a website where you're already selling your product 
product online, I highly recommend doing it. It'll make the process of getting brand registry a little bit easier. The next step applying for brand registries, they're gonna ask you some information about your distribution. So the first question they ask you is, does your brand sell to distributors? And in our case, no, it does not, because we're creating our own product, Rocket Tea, and we're selling it directly on Amazon. Then it asks, where are your brand's products distributed? In our case, it's only in the United States, so we're only gonna select that. If you have other places, you can add those as well. And then the last question asks is license information. Does your brand license trademarks to others who manufacture products associated with your intellectual property? In our case, it's no. The only people that are making our product are us. Now, on the other hand, if you're a company like Disney who licenses out their trademarks, you would select yes. But for most of the people watching this video, the answer is gonna be no. If for any reason you have gone through the contract and you've sold the licensing rights to your product, of course, you'll just select yes and it's a little bit different of a process. But now that we're done, we're gonna go ahead and click submit. And once you apply, it may take a couple weeks for you to be approved. And sometimes you might need to apply more than once. But once you are approved, you're going to get access to all kinds of new features here. For instance, there's A plus content manager, there's Vine, there's deals, there's coupons, there's promotions, there's all these things that were locked before that you now get access to. On top of that, if you go into brands, you'll see brand analytics, brand protection, all this different stuff, including the brand referral bonus, which I highly recommend that you apply for, has all been unlocked. The next step is to create a listing on Amazon for the product that you wanna sell. Now I'm gonna show you how to list your product on Amazon. And the first thing you need to do when listing a product on Amazon is to sign up for an Amazon seller account. You can go to sell.amazon.com, click sign up and sign up for an account. Once you've signed up for an account, you're gonna log into that account and it'll take you to your Amazon seller central. Once you're in your seller central account, you're gonna click on these three lines up here. You're gonna to go to catalog and you're gonna click on add products. If you're looking to sell a product on Amazon that's already being sold on Amazon, you're gonna type in the product name here or you can use the UPC code or the ASIN number. But if the product that you wanna sell on Amazon is not yet being sold on Amazon, you're gonna click on I'm adding a product not sold on Amazon. The next step is you're gonna tell Amazon which category to put the product listing that you're creating in. And there are a ton of different categories, appliances, baby products, beauty and personal care, all kinds of different things. And the easiest way to figure out which category to put your product in is type what you're trying to sell on Amazon. So we're gonna be selling a type of black tea. So we'll click on this search button and it'll tell us what it thinks the best categories would be. And it gives us a bunch of different options. And after looking at all these different options, I think that this grocery and gourmet beverages tea black is the best option. Now, if you're not sure what the best option is for you, you can look at similar products that are being sold on Amazon and try to figure out what category they're being sold on. Once you figure that out, you're gonna select that category. And the first question it's going to ask you when selling a product on Amazon is, does this product have variations? And our current product does not. We only have one flavor in its passion fruit. Now in the future, we're gonna have other flavors. So eventually we will come back in here and we'll change this to yes. But for now, since it's only one product without any variations, we're gonna say no. If you're selling your product in multiple colors, multiple sizes, you'll select yes. The next thing you'll need to fill out is the external product ID. And you can select what kind of an ID you wanna use. Do you wanna use an EIN, a GTIN, UPC, or ASIN? Now, most people watching this video, you're gonna select a UPC code. And UPC stands for Universal Product Code. And just about every product in the world has a UPC code. That is the barcode that you see on products that they scan at Walmart, at Target, or just about anywhere that they sell products. And you need some kind of an identification number if you're gonna be selling on Amazon. As I mentioned, a UPC code is the most common one. And to get a UPC code for your product, you're gonna to go to gs1.org and select get your barcode. And it used to be that you had to buy 10 barcodes at the same time, which was around $250, but recently gs1.org has allowed you to just buy one barcode for $30, and I highly recommend paying the $30 and getting a legitimate barcode. There are other websites where you can get barcodes for cheaper, but oftentimes by trying to save a little bit of money, it's gonna cause you a lot of headaches down the road. So don't cheap out, get the legitimate authentic barcodes from gs1.org. And once you get your barcode, you'll type those numbers in here. If for some reason you're selling a product that does not require a UPC code, you can select I don't have a product ID and it'll make you apply for an exemption. The next thing Amazon's gonna ask you is to put the name of your item. And this is gonna be the title of your Amazon listing. And so when people go to Amazon and they search for your product, they're gonna see the title, the main image, 
the price and the number of reviews. So the title is one of the most important things and a lot of people don't pay enough attention to this. So the title that we decided to go with for this product is High Caffeine Tea, Passion Fruit Black Tea, Extra Strong Flavored, 14 pack bag, healthy coffee alternative, 200 milligrams, highly caffeinated substitute by Rocket Tea. Now the reason we have such a long title and the reason that we started with high caffeine tea is because the way that Amazon works. And Amazon at the end of the day is just a search engine. People go to Amazon to search for products they wanna buy. Usually people are not going to Amazon to search for your product. They're searching for what they wanna purchase and they happen to find your product. So in our example, people go to Amazon and they'll search for things like high caffeine tea. And we want to let Amazon know that our product is a high caffeine tea. So when people are searching for it, our product will go to the top of the search results. And the only way that Amazon's gonna know if your product should even be in the search results is based on your title and your bullet points and the keywords you give to Amazon because that lets Amazon know what searches are relevant to your product. So I'll go into depth later in this video talking about how to figure out what keywords you should put in your title. But for now, this is the title that we use. The next thing is the brand name and you're gonna put the brand name of your product. Now, if your product that you're selling does not have a brand name, you can check this box right here to let Amazon know. If your product does have a brand name though, you are gonna have to go through the brand registry process to let Amazon know that you actually own the brand that you're talking about. And part of going through brand registry is you do need to file for a trademark. But don't worry, if you don't wanna go through brand registry, you can always just select this box and it just won't show the brand name of your product on your listing. Once you're done filling out this information, you're gonna click on continue. The most important part of listing your product, in my opinion, is the images and the bullet points. And we're gonna to get to that in just a few minutes, but first we need to fill out this vital information. And the first question they ask is, who is the manufacturer? And you can put almost whatever you want here. And if it's your product, you can put your own brand name here. Even if you used a third party manufacturer, it doesn't matter. We're just gonna put Rocket T for this example. For each unit count, we're gonna go ahead and put one because we're gonna be sending one bag of Rocket T. The next question is, is the product expirable? And the answer to this is yes, because our product is a tea product. It has a shelf life of around two years. It will expire after that. Now, if you're selling a product that does not expire, you'll select no to this. For instance, AJ, a student that I also partner with on his product, Cocktail Cards, since that product is made out of cardboard, it never expires. So in that case, we'd select no. After that, you'll let Amazon know what the country of origin is. And since our product is manufactured in the United States, we're gonna put United States. The next question is the unit count. And our product comes with 14 tea bags. And under unit count type, we're gonna put count. Uh, you can change this to different things. There's other options. You can put ounces or different things depending on what kind of a product you're selling. But to keep things simple, we're gonna put 14 count. Then you'll select whether your product contains liquids or not. No for us. Is the item heat sensitive? No. And it'll also put the form factor. And for this, I'm just gonna select standalone because it's a standalone pouch. And it'll also ask you, is package level orderable? And for most people watching this video, you're going to select yes. This is a little bit more of a complicated one. Don't worry about it. For now, if you want more information, you can hover over the question mark for any of these different things. We're gonna go ahead and select yes. What this basically means is, is this package that you're creating a listing for, is it something that people can order? And before we click save and finish, there are some other things that we need to fill out. So let's go to the offer next. And the first field is what is the SKU? SKU stands for stock keeping unit. And you can put whatever you want here. If you wanna leave this blank, Blank, you can, but then Amazon's just gonna randomly assign you a stock keeping unit that's just gonna be a bunch of numbers and letters. This is mostly just for organizational purposes. So what we're gonna put here is Rocket Tea Passion Fruit. That way in the future, as we add more flavors, we can just change Rocket Tea to orange, Rocket Tea to raspberry. Amazon's also gonna ask you what your price is gonna be. So we're gonna put $27. 99 and this is the standard price i'll show you later how you can always discount your product and put it on sale for a limited time next up amazon's going to ask you how much quantity you have of the products that you're going to sell and this is only relevant if you plan on doing fulfilled by merchant and i'm going to explain that in just a second but before i get there it also asks you what is the condition type of the product that you're selling and for most people selling products on Amazon, it's going to be new. But now we get to an important question, and that is what is the fulfillment channel 
of this product. And fulfillment channel basically just means, are you going to ship it or are you gonna allow Amazon to ship it? And so the way that this works is you have two different options here. This first one here is merchant fulfilled. Oftentimes you'll hear people talk about this as FBM, which stands for fulfilled by merchant. And this just simply means that every time you get an order on Amazon's website, Amazon's gonna give you a notification and you're gonna to have to print out the shipping label, you're gonna to have to package up the item, you're gonna to have to put that shipping label on the item and ship it out to the customer. And that's not what I normally recommend. For most people watching this video right here, I recommend instead doing Amazon will ship and provide customer service. This is oftentimes known as FBA or fulfilled by Amazon. This is where you send a number of units of your product ready to go into the Amazon warehouse. And when Amazon gets an order, they're going to pick, pack, and ship it out to the customer. This is gonna save you a lot of time, but also a lot of money because Amazon has cheaper fulfillment rates. You're also gonna get more sales because when you send your products into the Amazon warehouse and you select this option, it'll put a little prime badge on your product listing, meaning that everybody that goes to Amazon that's a Prime member will see this and they'll know when they buy your product, they're able to get the product shipped to them in two days. And Prime customers are much more likely to buy Prime eligible products. Amazon knows this, so usually they'll put Prime eligible products at the top of the search results, meaning ultimately more sales for you. There are over 150 Prime members in the United States and this number is continuing to grow. And these people all want Prime eligible products. So I highly recommend if you want to create a passive income source for yourself, then select Amazon will ship and provide customer service. Once you're done with that, we're going to go to the next section, which is the images. And this is one of the most important parts that so many people overlook. And the reason again is because when someone searches for a product that they want to buy, all they see for the different products is the main image, the title, the price, and the number of reviews. And the main image is probably the most important thing. If you can capture people's attention with your main image, they're highly likely to click on your product. And if they click on your product, they're very likely to buy your product. So you wanna make sure that you have the perfect main image. And to create the perfect main image, you wanna have an image that's going to stand out in the search results and perfectly match what people are searching for. That's why for this product, we created packaging that says high caffeine tea in big red letters in its black packaging. This is going to strongly contrast with Amazon's white background. People are gonna see this black packaging and then they're also gonna see that it says in big red letters, high caffeine tea, which is exactly what they were searching for because most of the sales that we're gonna get are probably people searching for high caffeine tea. So for our main image, we're basically just gonna be showing the product packaging. And to upload your main image, you're gonna click right here on upload and you're gonna select the image that you'd like to use. In addition to your main image, you can also add up to eight additional images Images. And you want to make sure you add as many images as possible for your product because when people are buying something on Amazon, they can't pick it up, they can't physically hold it. And the only way that they can know what it's like to own your product is by looking at these other images. So this is a chance for you to really sell your product and convince people to actually buy your product instead of the competition. And some examples of things that you should use for the other images is always use some kind of a graph or chart showing how your product is better than the competition. Here we have what a normal cup of green tea looks like black tea, coffee, and other leading brands of tea. And we have how much caffeine we have all the way up here. We also have a chart here that shows how much more powerful and better rocket tea is over coffee. We have some more charts here and we show also that the product is made in the USA. All of these other images still need to be improved. We have another one right here that shows the flavor, it shows passion fruit that hopefully is gonna convince people to buy our product. Now there are some things that I want to let you know and that is that there are some image guidelines when adding photos. Now your main image needs to have a white background. The images that you upload also need to be at least 1000 by 1000 pixels. This is so when people are hovering over the images on your product listing, it'll be able to zoom in. JPEG is the preferred image format, but you can also use TIFF or GIF files. All your other images don't need to have a black background, but something to be aware of is you're only supposed to show in the images things that are actually being sold. You're not supposed to use any props or anything like that, but a lot of people still use props and they never get in trouble for it. But there is a chance that if you do show something in one of your images that doesn't come with your product, there's a chance that Amazon might take down that image. If that happens, it's not a big deal. You can just add a different image later. So once you've added your main image and all the other images, we're gonna go over to the description. And this is where you can add the bullet points for your product and the bullet points are crucial because this is another chance for you to convince people to buy your product. It's also a place that you can enter 
keywords and keywords are things that people search for in Amazon. So just like we did with a title, we're going to want to put things in here that people search for in Amazon because if Amazon sees that the keyword that people are searching for is in your title and it's in your bullet points, it's very likely that Amazon will put your product towards the top of the search results. And these are the bullet points that we're going to use for Rocket T. Now, one of the biggest mistakes that most people make when creating bullet points is one, they don't sell the benefit of the product. And you can see here that we have highest caffeine tea in the world. When Willem first wrote the bullet points, he actually just put 200 milligrams of caffeine per tea bag. Nobody cares that the product has 200 milligrams of caffeine. That doesn't sound cool. That's a very technical feature. Most people don't even understand what that means. But what people do care about is that it's the highest caffeine tea in the world. They understand what that means. Another thing that he did in the original bullet points was put 100 milligrams of L-theanine per tea bag. Again, no one really understands what's the benefit of having L-theanine. And the benefit of L-theanine is smooth energy. So I highlighted that first. You wanna go through and figure out why do people wanna buy your product, put that in capital letters. And the last thing I'll mention about the bullet points is I always like having my fifth bullet point say something to the effect of 100% money back guarantee. You need to try it and see for yourself and basically letting people know that they can buy this product, they can test it out, and if they don't love it, they can get 100% of their money back. And here's a secret, every single product on Amazon has a 100% money back guarantee, but by letting people know and putting it in their face, they're more likely to feel comfortable comfortable buying and trying your product out. So once you have your bullet points, you're going to paste them in here and then you'll click add more and you'll put the next bullet point in after that. And you'll do this for all five bullet points. Once you're done filling out your bullet points, Amazon asks you, is there any kind of mandatory cautionary statement? Look through these different examples here and see if any of these apply to your product. If none of them do, you can click on no warning applicable. Before we click on save and finish, there's actually more options that are hidden. And to get those other options, you can click on all attributes. And you don't have to add all these attributes, but there are some secret hidden gems that I highly recommend doing. And one of them is the product description. This is completely optional, but this is another chance for you to sell people on why your product is amazing. So write out a compelling reason why people should buy your product and go ahead and paste it in there. You can add a sale price for your product. And we're actually gonna be discounting Rocket Tea for the first week that it's available. And it's gonna be available next week, which is September 20th and we're going to end the sale after one week and it's going to be on midnight September 27th. So if you're interested in purchasing Rocket Tea and getting a discount, I highly recommend you can click on the link down below to get on the wait list for this product. Or if you're seeing this video after we've already launched it, that link will take you straight to the Amazon listing page. Go to the Amazon page, buy Rocket Tea. And obviously after you get the product, make sure to leave a review. Hopefully it is a five-star review. Another hidden thing that's very important is this offer start date. And you wanna make sure that if you're gonna be selling a product in the future, that you don't wanna release it too soon because if you don't select an offer start date what's gonna happen is as soon as your listing gets approved your products gonna be available for sale and that's really bad that's something you want to avoid because the way that Amazon works is you want to try to get as many sales as possible from day one so if the first day that your listing is available is just whenever Amazon approves your listing it's gonna make it so your product has no sales when it first comes available for sale so you always want to make sure that you put this date as a date in the future and another key thing to selling a product on Amazon is you want to try to build up your audience and the reason I say this is because you you wanna to try to do a bunch of promotion. You wanna to try to get people excited so that when you launch your product, on that first day, you're gonna get as many sales as possible. Another key thing that a lot of people skip is this keyword section. And this is gold. You need to go in and you need to add keywords because this is telling Amazon exactly what search results are relevant to your product. And I'm gonna show you how to figure out what search terms you should be focused on. And this tool, Helium 10, is a crucial tool if you're gonna be selling a product on Amazon because it's gonna help you to figure out which keywords you should be targeting. And this tool, Helium 10, is a crucial tool to use if you're gonna be selling a product on Amazon because it's gonna help you to figure out which search terms, which keywords you should be targeting. And by using this tool, it's gonna to make it so you have a better title, better bullet points, you can figure out these search terms, and ultimately it's gonna make it so that your product gets more sales. I have a link with a discount code in the description for Helium 10. And once you sign up for Helium 10, there's actually two different tools here that are going to help you to figure out which keywords to target. One is the magnet tool and the other one is Cerebro. And the way that the magnet tool works is you type in what things you think people would type into Amazon to buy your product. And Willem and I think that 
high caffeine tea is the thing that people are gonna type into Amazon to find our product. And Helium 10 lets you know how many people per month actually search that on Amazon. And it turns out over 2,800 people per month search high caffeine tea, which is a great sign. And that means that this is one of the things that we wanna make sure that we include in our title and in the search terms and the bullet points. But the other thing that this tool does is it actually gives us other ideas that people might be typing into Amazon that we might wanna to try to use as search terms. Now, not all of these keywords are relevant, but you can go through and you can try to figure out which ones are the most relevant to your product that also happen to get the highest search volume. And by doing that, we came up with this list of things that people are searching in Amazon where they might be interested in our product. And we have things like energy drink mix, natural energy drink mix, high caffeine, caffeinated tea, energy tea, and a long list of other things. The problem is when putting in search terms in here, they specifically say no repetition and no competitor brand name. So you don't wanna ever put something like Apple or the exact trademark name of one of your competitors. So another tool that you can use to do this is this tool called Frankenstein. You'll take the list of keywords that you have, you can copy it and then you can paste it in here and it will remove any kind of duplicates and convert everything to lowercase so that you can just simply paste it into the search term. So this whole long list of everything got condensed down to just these words right here. We're gonna take that and we're gonna paste it right here. As I mentioned, you should also use those keywords and make sure you include them in your title and in your bullet points. I do wanna make it clear, there are a lot more optional things that you can add to your listing. And I do talk about all those things in detail in my Amazon FBA program, the Passion Products Formula. My program is not open right now, but there is a link to the wait list down below for the the next time that I open it up. So if you're interested in my Amazon FBA program and you wanna learn more about my unique method for selling products on Amazon, I call it creating a passion product. You can click on the link in the description down below to get on the wait list and find out more information about my Amazon FBA program. Once you have your Amazon listing created, you can send inventory into the Amazon warehouse. The first step to send an inventory into the Amazon warehouse is to go to sell.amazon.com Click sign up and sign up for your Amazon account. After you sign up for your Amazon seller account, you're going to need to add the product that you want to send in to the Amazon warehouse into your inventory right here. And to do that, you're gonna to go to catalog and click on add products. And if you're trying to send in a product into the Amazon warehouse that's already being sold on Amazon, you're gonna type in that product name here. If the product you're looking to sell on Amazon is not currently being sold on Amazon, you'll click on this link right here, which says I'm adding a product not sold on Amazon. Amazon will then ask you to fill out some information about your product. And once you're done with that process, if you go to your inventory, manage all inventory, you will see the product here in your inventory. And I'm gonna to explain to you step-by-step step how we actually sent over 900 units of this product into the Amazon warehouse in just a second. But one important thing that I wanna note is that when you're adding your product into Amazon, you don't need to have your Amazon listing perfect. You just need to create a basic listing. And we use this as the main image, which is not Amazon compliant. And if you look at what title we used, we just called this item Rocket Tea Passion Fruit Black Tea. We have not optimized this. We haven't added any other images other than the main image. This listing is not ready to go, but it's a good enough listing that we could use it to send in inventory into the Amazon warehouse. And you don't need to worry about creating your own listing if you're selling a product that's already being sold on Amazon, but if you're looking to sell on Amazon so that you can create a legitimate passive income business, I don't recommend selling products that are already being sold on Amazon. I recommend creating a unique product instead, ideally a passion product, which is what I always teach on this channel. But once you're ready to send in the inventory, you're gonna click here and you're gonna click send slash replenish inventory. And warning, there are five mistakes that people make when trying to send inventory into the Amazon warehouse that ends up costing them thousands of dollars. And the first mistake that you need to avoid when sending an inventory into the Amazon warehouse is to make sure that the ship from address is correct. And this is a mistake that Willem, who is a student that's in my Amazon FBA program that I ended up partnering with for this product almost made. And if you have the wrong ship from address, you can click here and click ship from another address and put the address of the place that you're actually gonna be shipping from. A lot of times people make the mistake of putting the ship from address as their home address when in fact they're shipping the products from their manufacturer straight into Amazon. And that's what we did with Rocket T. We shipped all the units straight from the manufacturer into the Amazon warehouse. The next step is to scroll down and make sure that you're sending in the right product. And you can look here at the SKU number and SKU stands for stock keeping unit. This is just a number that you assign to your product. There's also the ASIN number here and the ASIN number stands for Amazon standard identification number. Every single product on Amazon has a unique 
ASIN number and you want to make sure that this is the correct ASIN number. If it's the correct product, it should be the correct ASIN number. But the next thing that you're going to do is go over here and put in the packing details. Now, since we've already sent in inventory to the Amazon warehouse, we already have these templates here and we could just use this template, but let me show you how to create a new template. If this is your first time doing it, you're going to click on create new case pack template. You're then going to put in a name for this template. So I'm going to call this 150 test and you're going to put in how many units of your product is going to be put into every single box. And we put 150 pouches of rocket tea into every box that we're sending into Amazon. So I'm going to put 150 here. Then you're going to measure the box and put in the box dimensions. You're also going to weigh the box with all your units in the box and tape and everything on the box to see how much it weighs. And for us, it was a little bit over 16 pounds. You're then going to look at the prep category. And for most products, there's no prep needed, but click on this and just look to see if there's anything special about your product. For instance, is it an adult item? Is it baby products, fragile slash glass? Is there liquids or anything where Amazon might need to know that there's more prep needed? For us, there's no prep needed, so we're just gonna save that. And the last thing we're gonna do is select who labels the units. And I recommend always for you to label the units yourself, do not have Amazon label the units because they're gonna charge 50 cents per unit. And labeling your units just means adding on your ASIN barcode to every single unit that you're going to be selling. And you could add that barcode on as a sticker. If you go here and you print SKU labels, you can put in how many units you need labels for. For instance, let's say we needed 30. We'll click on print and you'll get a paper that looks like this with a bunch of barcodes. And you can buy sticker paper that you can put into any printer, print out these barcodes and just slap it on your product. Or if you don't wanna do this yourself, you can always ask your manufacturer to do it and they'll do it for a small fee. But what I actually recommend doing if you're selling your own unique product is just print this barcode right onto the packaging of your product. And this is what we did for Rocket Tea. It saves us time and money because we don't have to deal with printing out and buying sticker paper and labeling every single unit. All our packaging will already have this barcode on it. You'll then tell Amazon how many boxes you're gonna send in. And for our first shipment, we sent in six boxes, which is a little over 900 units. And right now, Amazon's limiting it so you can only send in a thousand units if this is your first time selling this product. Once you start getting some sales volume, they'll up that number so that in the future, you can send in more inventory into the Amazon warehouse. You'll then click on ready to send and then click on confirm and continue. You'll then tell Amazon the date on when you plan on shipping out this product so that they'll know when to expect to receive it. And here is the second mistake that people make when sending in products into the Amazon warehouse. And that's clicking on small parcel delivery when in fact they're sending in a large volume. Sometimes it makes more sense to send in less than a truckload. And you'd select less than truckload if you're planning on sending in an entire pallet of your product. Less than truckload means that it's not an entire truckload, that it's just one pallet. Where on the other hand, small parcel delivery is if you're just sending in a few boxes and if you're using small parcel delivery and just sending in a few boxes, you can wrap up those boxes and just drop them off at a UPS and UPS will ship them into the Amazon warehouse for you. I'll explain in more depth how that works later in this video. If you do select less than truckload, a truck will come to your house or to your warehouse and pick up the products for you. And this is what I do with my passion product, Performance Nut Butter, because we send in a thousand or 2000 units, which fits nicely on a pallet. And it's a lot more affordable to send all those products using a pallet. With Rocket Tea, since that product doesn't take up a lot of space, it's a very lightweight product, and we were only sending in 900 units into the Amazon warehouse, it made more sense just to do small parcel delivery. You're then gonna scroll down and check out this information. It's gonna tell you what the weight is of all the different parcels that you're sending in. Since we're sending in six boxes and each one weighs around 16 pounds, the total weight is 96 pounds and it's gonna give you a price. And because Amazon has a relationship with UPS, you get to take advantage of their discounted shipping rates. And so it's only gonna cost $55 for us to send six different boxes that together weigh over 96 pounds. If you were to try to ship these boxes somewhere else using UPS, it would cost hundreds of dollars more. Now that being said, UPS is the default carrier, but if you wanna use a non-Amazon partnered carrier, you can select whoever you wanna use like FedEx, DHL, or even USPS. But let me tell you right now, it's almost always gonna be more expensive, so I don't recommend doing that unless you really have to. The next step is to click on accept charges and confirm shipping. The next step is to print the box labels. So every box that has all your units in it that you're gonna be sending into Amazon, you need to print and put two different labels on those boxes. And to get those labels, you're gonna click right here and you're gonna click on print. And there's gonna be 12 different stickers that Amazon has you print. And there's two stickers, as I mentioned, for every box. 
The first one we're going to look at here is going to have the ship from and the ship to address. And this is for Amazon to be able to track your package. As soon as your package gets into the Amazon warehouse, they're going to scan this and let you know that they received this box. You need to make sure that you leave this label uncovered because if Amazon can't scan this, they're not going to know that it's your product and it's going to get lost. The second label that you're going to print out in attached to your box is the UPS label. And again here, you want to make sure that the ship to and the ship from address are correct. And UPS will use this label to make sure that it gets to the correct destination. Another thing you'll want to check is to make sure that this SKU number here matches the SKU of the products that you want to send into Amazon. And this is another mistake that people make when sending an inventory to Amazon. They don't double check that all the stickers and everything is correct. On top of that, you'll want to make sure that the shipping weight is correct because if this label says a different weight than you're planning on shipping, it's going to cause issues and it may mean that you made a mistake earlier on in this process. From there, you're going to box up the products that you want to send into the Amazon warehouse. And you can usually just use the boxes that your manufacturer put your products in. But if for any reason you don't have a box, you can go to Walmart, buy boxes off Amazon, or my personal favorite place to buy boxes from is Uline.com. And the fourth mistake that I made sure that Willem avoided when sending in Rocket T into Amazon and that you should avoid as well is when you're sending your products into Amazon, one of the secrets to saving a lot of money with shipping is to try to put as many of your units in a box as possible. Because the more boxes that you have to send into the warehouse, the more money you're gonna pay in shipping. Now you do need to make sure that the box stays under 50 pounds. If you try to ship a box into the Amazon warehouse that weighs over 50 pounds, it's gonna cause a lot of issues and I don't recommend doing it unless you absolutely need to. And this is the case sometimes for oversized products, but it's very rare and you wanna make sure to avoid that. The other thing that you wanna make sure is that the box that you're sending in is under 25 by 25 by 25. Basically, you want to make sure that no side of your box is over 25 inches. And the fifth and final mistake that people make when sending an inventory to the Amazon warehouse that costs them a lot of money is they don't follow up. They don't see the details. They don't look at the status of the shipment. And to see the status of your shipment, you can go into Manage FBA Shipments. And if you scroll down, you can see here that we sent in 900 units and it still says that they're receiving it. So we're going to click on Track Shipment. And you can go here and you can see exactly where your shipment is in the process. You can see that we created the shipment here. It was in transit here. It was delivered to the Amazon warehouse at this date. It was checked in. It started being receiving. And it's technically still in the receiving process, even though Amazon does say that they have received all 900 units. And it does say here that Amazon will confirm all the units in our shipment by September 16th, which is more than a month after they initially received it at their warehouse, which is another thing to note. If you're looking to start selling a product, you want to send that product into the Amazon warehouse weeks, if not a month before you're actually going to sell it because sometimes it does take Amazon time to receive all your units and get it ready so that you can start selling it on Amazon. Once you have your product in the Amazon warehouse, you can launch your product. And I'm about to show you a video that I filmed on the day that I launched my Amazon product. And I'm gonna share all the secrets that I use to launch the product. How you launch your product on Amazon makes the difference between massive profits and failure. So pay attention because I just launched this product today and I'm going to share with you all the secrets that I use to get my product as many sales as possible from day one and to make sure that it gets to the top of the search results. Because the way that Amazon works is the products that show up at the top of the search results get most of the sales. In fact, this is a graph of how many sales the products get depending on where the product shows up in the search results. And as you can see, the product at the top of the search results gets by far most of the sales and the second, third, and fourth product gets less. And it's actually exponential. The top product is gonna get the most sales. So you wanna do whatever it takes to get your product to the top of the search results. And the way to do this is to get as many sales as possible from day one and ultimately to get as many five-star reviews as you can within the first few weeks. Amazon's gonna see this and it's gonna put your product up higher in the search results. And what's gonna happen because you're higher in the search results, you're gonna get more sales naturally. And then Amazon's gonna to continue to put you higher and higher in the search results. And this is gonna snowball into massive success. And there are seven things that I did to make sure that my products would get as many sales as possible from day one. And number seven is something that I've never talked about on this YouTube channel before. So make sure you stay till the end of the video for that. Now let me share with you the most important principle to launching a product that nobody talks about. A lot of the people that are Amazon gurus, they talk about how to use all these tactics and tricks to get your product ranked higher up in Amazon. 
but most of them don't know what I'm about to share with you. And this book right here is the Bible of how to actually use internet marketing techniques to properly launch a product online. And one of the main principles from this book is that it's all about the buildup. It's all about the hype. When you're going to launch something and you're looking to get a lot of sales, as many sales as possible from day one, you need to spend weeks, if not even months, building up the hype for the product so that when you open up sales, as many people are going to be ready and excited to buy your product as possible. I've had Willem start building a tribe, which is one of the principles from this book. I'm going to talk about in depth how to build a tribe in step number three. And if launch is the Bible for how to launch a product on the internet, this book, Influence, is probably the most important book that every single marketer, internet marketer, and that you should read if you're looking to influence people to buy your products. And there's six principles that they talk about in this book that you can use to influence people to buy your products or pretty much do whatever you want. And one of the principles that we're going to be using during this launch, as I already mentioned, is scarcity. When things are scarce, it forces people to take action. And so that's why we're doing a discount for our product for the first week. You need to light a fire under your customer's butts to make them actually go to Amazon and buy your product. And that's one of the things that we're doing. The second most important thing that you need to know when launching a product on Amazon is that it's all about keywords and you need to do proper keyword research. Keywords are the things that people type into Amazon when they're searching for a product. So for instance, with this product, we know that if someone types in high caffeine tea, we want to try to get to the top of the search results. And Amazon is just a search engine. But in this video, I'm explaining how the algorithm works so that you can game the system and get your product to the top of the search results. Because as I mentioned earlier, the product that's at the top of the search results, when someone types in a keyword and hits search, is the product that's going to get the most sales. But not all keywords are equal. Some things people search for a lot more often than other things. And certain search phrases or keywords are more competitive than others. So we did an analysis on what keywords we think we could get to the top of the search results on that have the most possible searches, which means the most possible people that are going to buy our product. And to do this, you can use tools like Helium 10's Magnet Tool. But if you are interested in Helium 10, I have a discount code in the link down below in the description. And once you know what keywords you want to rank for, you're going to put those keywords in your title in your bullet points. You're also going to want to encourage people that are going to be buying your product to search for those keywords in Amazon and then scroll through the different search results to find your product and buy it. This is called Search Find Buy. And this is is technically against Amazon's terms of service. So I would recommend proceeding with caution with the search find buy. They recently said that it's absolutely banned, but I still know that a lot of people are doing this. And so what I would do is I would encourage people that are going to buy our product to go to Amazon and search for highest caffeine tea, high caffeine tea, or even energy tea, which are the main keywords that we're going after. And then to go through all the different products, and it might be on the second page even, to click on our product and buy our product. What happens is that Amazon then sees that someone searched for high caffeine tea, went through all the listings, bought our product, and Amazon's now gonna wanna put our product higher up in the search results because it sees that when people search for high caffeine tea, they go through and they buy our product. So the algorithm wants to make it easier for people to find our product. So if you really wanna help out the channel, you can go to Amazon, search for one of these terms, scroll through all the results, find Rocket Tea, buy the product, and make sure to leave a review a couple weeks after you purchase the product. And the third thing that we did to launch this product is we built a tribe. And this is the most important thing that I've never heard an Amazon guru talking about. And this is the reason why AJ was able to do over half a million dollars in sales in his first year selling his product on Amazon. He built a tribe using social media. He created TikTok videos, his videos went viral, and then people started following him and loved the content that he was making. So that when he launched his product on Amazon, of course, his tribe was gonna go support him. They bought a bunch of his cocktail cards, they left reviews, and it ended up leading to a positive cycle where he got more sales and more reviews, and now he's by far the best-selling product in his category. We're hoping to do something similar with Rocket Tea, but to be completely honest, I would say that we did not do as good of a job at this as I would like. Willem did do a little bit of social media and TikTok, but he kept hitting roadblocks because he felt like he needed to have the product. And I personally don't think that that should stop you from doing social media. Even if you don't have the product in your hands, you can still do all kinds of things to promote your product. In fact, AJ didn't have the product when he first started his TikTok and he was still able to get momentum. That being said, moving forward, our strategy on TikTok is gonna be giving people samples of the tea, watching them drink it, and then coming back maybe a couple hours later and seeing how they feel. And I will say that if the product fails, it's gonna be because we didn't do a good enough job 
growing a tribe. And this is my fault. I didn't stress this enough to Willem how important this is. So please at home, pay attention. If you're going to be launching a product on Amazon, build a tribe first so that when you launch your product from day one, you're gonna get as many sales as possible. And once you start building a community, you're gonna to wanna to get them into a Facebook group or a Discord. And this is another one of those things that no Amazon guru is talking about, but it's hugely, hugely impactful because if you can get people into a Facebook group, what's going to happen is they're gonna start creating community. And this is gonna establish social proof for you because people that are interested in your product are gonna see that there's other people that are also interested. And this creates what's called social proof, which is another trigger from the book, Influence. As humans, we like to buy things that are already popular, where there's social proof, meaning that other humans have approved of the thing that we're going to buy. This is why when we go to Amazon, we like to buy the product with the most five-star reviews, or if we're deciding between different restaurants, we'll wanna go to the one that has the longer line. We'll assume that the one that has the longer line is actually better, even though it'd be more convenient to go to the one with the shorter line. By using the Facebook group or a Discord service, you're also gonna create commitment and consistency. Because one of the things that Willem did when creating this product is he would ask questions to the community and say, hey guys, what do you think the name should be? And people would respond and say what they think the name for the product should be. Originally, the name that Willem had for this product was Rocket Ship Tea, but people said, you know what? The idea of Rocket Tea would be a lot better. And the principle of commitment and consistency says that if people support something, they're gonna continue supporting it. So by getting people to give feedback and give their energy into this product, he was able to get people to be committed to the idea that this product should succeed. So when he goes to launch it, they're gonna to wanna to see this product succeed because they helped to create it. The fifth thing we did to launch this product was creating an email sequence to hype up and build up this product so that as many people would wanna buy the product from day one. And the way we did this was a month before the product was launched, we sent out an email letting people know that it was gonna be coming in a month. And then as the product launch got closer, we started emailing a little bit more frequently. And for the last week or so, we probably sent out four or five different emails letting people know that it was gonna be launched today, September 20th. And we're gonna continue to send out emails up until the discount ends. And as I mentioned, we're gonna have this product discounted for the first week. And we're gonna probably send out another five to seven emails. The sixth thing we're doing to launch this product, and this is a way to guarantee that your product will be at the top of the search results from day one. Even if you don't have any sales, even if you don't have any reviews, and this is PPC. PPC stands for pay per click. This is a type of advertising where you pay Amazon every time someone clicks on your ad. And so this will allow you to get your ad shown at the top of the search results, and you just pay Amazon a dollar or so every time someone clicks on your ad. And this is a great way to let Amazon know that your product should show up at the top of the search results. Because for instance, let's say that I told Amazon that I wanna show up at the top of the search results every time someone searches for high caffeine tea. So Amazon puts our ad at the top of the search results and then Amazon starts seeing that people click on our ad and they buy our product. Amazon's gonna know that our product should rank higher in the organic search results. And organic search results means the search results that are not paid. And early on when you first launch a product, Amazon doesn't wanna take a chance on putting your product at the top of the search results. So you need to show Amazon that our product actually deserves to be at the top of the search results, that if it's at the top of the search results, people are gonna click on it and they're gonna purchase our product. And one way to do this is to pay them a little bit of money through Amazon PPC. Now let's get into the seventh thing that we did to launch this product. And this principle is one of those things that you absolutely need to do if you're launching a product, and that's do anything that you can to get as many sales and reviews as possible. Willem's actually gonna go out into the streets and go to random strangers and basically say, hey, if you buy this product on Amazon, I'm gonna give you $20, and then he'll get the contact info from those people and follow up with them in a couple weeks and ask them to leave a review. Don't be afraid to get creative. Do whatever it takes to get as many sales as possible. And even though technically it's against Amazon's rules to get friends and family to buy your product and leave reviews, most of the Amazon sellers that I know do this. As long as you've never logged on with your Amazon seller account to the same Wi-Fi that one of your friends or family has logged on to their Amazon buyer account, you're pretty much safe. Amazon's not gonna know if the person that's buying your product is your friend or your family. Another thing you can do is go up to people at work or acquaintances and ask them if they can buy your product. And then in exchange, you'll give them 100% of the money back that they spent on the product, plus maybe like a $5 gift card or something like that is a thank you for their time. So do whatever it takes to get as many sales for your product as possible. And again, if you wanna support the channel, click right here, go buy Rocket Tea, and then once you get the product, wait a couple days and leave a review. As I mentioned in the last video, an important part of launching your product 
is Amazon PPC. And in this next segment, I'm gonna show you how to do Amazon PPC. This is the exact formula that you can use to game the Amazon algorithm, get your product to the top of the search results and make as much money selling products on Amazon as possible. And this works even if your product has zero reviews. And I know that because I was able to use this method to launch a new product on Amazon and get to the top of the search results from day one, even though my product had zero reviews. And there's new research out that'll show you how to optimize your product to make as much money as possible with Amazon. Success on Amazon is directly related to how well your product ranks for different keywords. And keywords are what someone types into Amazon when they're searching for a product to buy. And the way that Amazon works is people go to Amazon, they search for whatever they're interested in purchasing, and then Amazon's algorithm determines how relevant your product is to their search results. And the way to get your product higher up on the search results is through sales velocity. And sales velocity basically means over the last eight days, how much of your product have you sold? And the more you can sell of your product, the higher up Amazon's gonna put your product on the search results. And that's where this formula comes in. You can think of sales velocity as three different components. The first component is the click-through rate, meaning when your product shows up on search results, how often does someone click through from the search results into your actual product listing page. The next number is the conversion rate. So once someone sees your product listing page, how often do they actually purchase the product? And your goal is to optimize these numbers as much as possible. And we've talked about in previous videos in the series how to do that. And here's some new research that shows how to optimize your click-through rate. And researchers hooked customers up to a computer and the computer tracked where their eyes were looking. And this heat map shows where they were most likely to look. And the more red something is, that means that more people were looking in that area. And we can see here that the number one thing that people look at is the main image. That's where it's all red for this main image and it's all red for this main image. So what this means is the most important thing that you need to optimize to get a high click-through rate is your main image. The other thing that we can see that people look at is the sales price in the title. So using this information, we really wanna make sure we maximize and make the best main image that we possibly can. Because the better that your main image is, the more likely that people are gonna click through to your actual product listing. The second metric is your conversion rate. So once someone's actually clicked into your listing, you need to make sure that you maximize the chance that they're actually going to purchase. And that's where this heat map comes into play. So again, researchers hooked people up to a computer to see where their eyes are looking. And again, the main image was one of the most important things that they looked at. At this point, once they've actually clicked through, the next thing that they look at is the number of reviews. And your goal is to maximize the chance that when someone clicks on your product listing, that they're actually going to purchase your product. And I talked about in a previous episode of this series how to do that, but just as a quick refresher, your main image, all the other images, the bullet points, the title, and the number of reviews, you want to optimize all of those. So you're going to do everything that you can to maximize that when someone searches for a keyword that they're going to click on your product from the search results. Then once they get to your product listing, you're gonna do everything you can to maximize the chance that they'll actually purchase your product. But that's only half the equation. The other half of this equation is the ET, and this stands for extra traffic. Because when you first launch, yes, some people are gonna find your product from searching for whatever your keyword is and organically finding your product. But most people, for the first couple of weeks that buy your product, they're not gonna find your product organically. They're gonna find it from one of two different possible ways. The first one is through your tribe. If you follow the passion product formula, you should be growing your social media, you should be growing your email list, you should be growing your tribe so that when you launch your product, you have an email list that you can send out an email to and let them know that your product is live on Amazon. This is gonna drive a ton of traffic to your product listing page and a ton of sales. This is gonna let Amazon know that you have an amazing product and it's gonna make it so Amazon puts your product higher in the search results. But I know there's a good chance that you at home watching this video did not follow the passion product formula, you did not grow a tribe. So this is where the second thing that you can do to drive extra sales comes in, and that is Amazon advertising or Amazon PPC. And Amazon PPC is one of the most powerful tools that you can use to get sales for your Amazon product from day one, even if you have zero reviews. And the way that Amazon PPC works is you can advertise on Amazon so that every time someone searches for whatever keyword that you choose, you will show up at the top of the search results. People will then click on your product and buy your product. And every time that customers do that, Amazon will realize that your product is a really good fit 
for this search phrase, which means that over time, Amazon's gonna rank your product higher up in the organic search results. And it's important to know that on Amazon, there is the sponsored search results that shows up at the top of the search results. And then there is the organic search results that you don't have to pay any money for. And those show up right below the sponsored search results. So if you wanna really get to the top of the search results, you need to pay to play. But in order to have long-term success on Amazon, you need to get to the top of the organic search results because still most people that buy products off Amazon do actually purchase from the organic search results. Most people do have somewhat of an awareness that the products at the very top are sponsored and a lot of people will scroll past those and go to the organic search results. Not everybody, but a lot of people. And I'm gonna show you in this video how to quickly and easily set up Amazon PPC. In fact, we're gonna be able to do it in under five minutes. I'll put a timer right here. And Amazon PPC, also known as Amazon advertising, works like crazy. And did you know that 66% of all people, when they're searching to buy a product online, they start their search on Amazon. And on average, people that use Amazon PPC see an ROI of 4X. That means for every dollar they spend, they get a return on their investment of $4. So let me show you right now a method that you can use to use Amazon advertising as soon as you launch your product, even if you have zero reviews. And as I mentioned, when you first launch a product, you wanna get as many sales as possible. So Amazon PPC is a great way to get a lot of sales and let the Amazon algorithm know that your product is relevant for certain and searches. So we're going to go up to those three bars right there. We're going to click on it and we're going to go down to advertising and to campaign manager. From here, you can see there are a few different types of campaigns that you can choose. The easiest way for beginners to start is just sponsored products. We're going to click continue right here. You're then ready to get started. And the first thing you're going to do is create an ad group name. And we're just going to call this one automatic rocket T. Then we're going to scroll down and select the product that we want to advertise for and we're gonna select this product. And right now this product says out of stock and it's not actually out of stock, it's just we've made it so it's not available yet, but we're still gonna be able to set up everything in the meantime. We're gonna scroll down here and we have two different options. We can either do automatic targeting or manual targeting. And I recommend everybody that's just about to start selling on Amazon to do automatic targeting at least. Later in this video, I'll also show you how to do manual targeting. So we're gonna start off with automatic targeting and we're gonna set a default bid. So it says that we should do a default bid of $1.43. For now, we're just gonna leave it at $1.43, but in the future, we can adjust this depending on the performance. As we scroll down, we can see that there's a few different bidding strategies we can use. We can do dynamic bids down only, dynamic bids up and down, or fixed bids. Now, usually I just do fixed bids, but I don't see any downside of doing dynamic bids down only. It basically means that we're telling Amazon we're willing to pay $1.43 every time someone clicks on our ad or you can always adjust it down. Now, the way that this works is you're not actually gonna spend $1.43 every time someone clicks on your ad. That's just the maximum you're willing to spend. And the way Amazon calculates how much you'll actually spend is it takes your competitors. So if your competitor is willing to spend a dollar and you're willing to spend $1.43, Amazon will charge you a penny above your competitor. So you'll end up paying a dollar and one cent. We can then come down here and we can put a name for this campaign. I'm just gonna put Rocket T Automatic and we can select a start date. And since our product is not even launching until September 20th, I'm gonna select that as the start date, and I don't recommend having an end date. Let the campaign run for as long as possible. You can always come in here manually and pause it if you feel the need to do that. From here, we're gonna select what we want the daily budget to be. I'm gonna put a daily budget of around $50, but it's up to you how much you wanna spend on your daily budget. From here, it asks you, do you wanna launch on other marketplaces? And no, we're just gonna launch in the United States marketplace. And the last thing that you're going to do is click the launch campaign button. From here, you can click on go to campaign manager, and I'm gonna show you how to create another type of campaign. So that was the automatic campaign, and the way the automatic campaign works is Amazon just basically advertises your product for whatever it thinks is a relevant search phrase. And you can always add negative keywords and tell Amazon, hey, these are the things that we don't think our product is relevant for, but you're not really gonna know what those negative search phrases are until you start getting some data. And this is a key part about paying for Amazon PPC. When you first launch your Amazon advertising PPC campaign, you're probably not gonna make money, but what you're gonna get is a lot of data, a lot of information. You're gonna be able to learn from that information how to optimize and maximize your campaigns, and over time, you're gonna actually be able to create a profitable campaign. And one way to make it so that you're even more likely to actually be profitable with Amazon PPC is click on that Create Campaign, 
click continue for sponsored products. And this time, instead of doing the automatic targeting, we're actually gonna do manual targeting. And manual targeting allows you to have a lot more control and your chance of having success with manual targeting is a lot higher. On the other hand, the benefit with the automatic targeting is it's easier to set up and sometimes you'll be able to find things that people are searching for on Amazon that you had no idea about. So we're gonna go back up here. We're gonna call this ad group Rocket T manual campaign. And then as we scroll down, we have two different options here. We can do keyword targeting or product targeting. We're gonna go with keyword targeting. And as we scroll down here, it gives us a list of different things that people search for in Amazon, and we can choose to advertise for them. So we could see here that we could show up as an ad every time someone searches for high caffeine tea. And we have the choice between advertising it as a broad campaign, a phrase campaign or an exact campaign. If we advertise it as a broad campaign, that means that anytime someone searches for the word high caffeine and tea, no matter what order it's in, no matter what else is in the search phrase and no matter what else they are searching for. So for instance, they might say something like high MCT caffeine tea and our ad would still show even though they're not exactly searching for high caffeine tea. The next option we have here is phrase match and that means that our ad will show as long as the phrase high caffeine tea shows up. It doesn't matter what words are before or after it, as long as that phrase shows up, then our ad is gonna show up. And the last option here is exact. And this means that our ad will only show up if someone searches exactly high caffeine tea in that exact order and there's nothing else before or after their search phrase. And you can see here that high caffeine tea is actually the most expensive thing to advertise on. So from there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at all the different other options here and see what else is relevant. For instance, I see that energy tea, that's relevant because our product is a high caffeine tea that's gonna be giving you energy. And what you do from here is continue to look through all these different search results and see what keywords are relevant to our product. For now, in this tutorial, I'm just gonna do something very basic right here. And we'll scroll down and we're gonna name this campaign. We're also gonna name this campaign Rocket T Manual Targeting. And we're gonna select a start date and an end date if you so choose and the daily budget. And once we're done with that, we're gonna click launch campaign. And if you're interested in learning more about how to use PPC to launch your product on Amazon, I partnered with an Amazon PPC expert and created an in-depth Amazon PPC training course. It's currently on sale for a huge discount. If you wanna learn more about that, there's a link right here, or you can click the link in the description down below to learn more about this program. We're selling this program at a very affordable rate. So if you're looking to learn more about Amazon PPC, click on the link right here to learn more about this Amazon PPC program. So at this point, it's been three months since launching Rocket Tea on Amazon and now I'm going to share with you the honest results and if you haven't yet smash that like button make sure to make that like button blue because no one else on YouTube is going to share with you the actual product they're selling along with the honest results including all the different costs and all the different details and in total in the last three months this product has done over $22,000 in sales on Amazon. Now, of course, if you're subscribed to this YouTube channel, you know that that's revenue and not profit. There's a lot of costs associated with selling a product on Amazon. The first cost we had was the cost to manufacture the products that we sold on Amazon. And we spent a little over $8,000 on that cost. We also spent over $3,000 on the Amazon selling fee. And this is a 15% fee that Amazon takes every time you sell a product on Amazon, whether you're using FBA or FBM. Now, if you are using FBA, there's an additional fee, and this is the pick and pack fee. And we spent almost $4,000 on this fee. And this is the fee that you have to pay every time you get an order and Amazon has to pick, pack, and ship your product out to the customer. Now this fee does include shipping and handling and the Amazon FBA pick and pack fee is oftentimes cheaper than shipping would be even if you shipped it yourself. So in total over the last three months, Willem and I have made close to $6,000 in profit. Now, obviously this isn't a crazy success story. I was hoping for this product to do a lot better, but still my question to you is what would you do with an extra $2,000 in profit a month? And I will explain why this product didn't do as well as I was hoping it was gonna do in just a minute. But keep in mind right now, Willem is living in Copenhagen, Thailand, hanging out on the beach and $2,000 a month goes a long way. And if he wanted to make even more money from this business, all he would have to do is create a second flavor, a third flavor, and the business would double or triple like that. So even if you create a product and it's only making a couple thousand dollars a month, if you wanna make more money, just create more products. But now I'm gonna share with you the three biggest mistakes, the most common mistakes that new Amazon sellers make. And mistake number one is the reason why Rocket Tea was not as big of a success as I'd like it to be, but 
Mistake number three is probably the most common mistake that I see that new sellers make that ends up leading to them just failing. And the first mistake that a lot of new sellers or wannabe sellers make is they don't put in the work. And with selling on Amazon, the more work you put into creating your product and marketing your product, the better the results that you're going to get. And with Rocket T, even though Willem did an amazing job creating the product, branding the product, there wasn't really a lot of social media. And that's a huge part if you really want to have a lot of success with your Amazon business, I recommend using TikTok, YouTube, creating some kind of social media or using influencers to promote your product. This is like putting jet fuel into your engine. It's gonna make your business absolutely explode if you do it. And an example of someone that did this really well was AJ. And if you don't know AJ's story, he was a bartender that lost his job during the pandemic. He ended up joining my Amazon FBA program and we partnered on a product called Cocktail Cards. He worked really hard. He started releasing TikToks every single day talking about this product and in his first First year selling this product on Amazon, he did half a million dollars. And so yes, I do want to be clear with you that starting an Amazon business might take a lot of work up front, but once you get that machine working for you, you can remove yourself from the business and start making some passive income. But the second most common mistake that people make is not starting sooner. Brent, for example, had the idea for Seer Pro a good year or two before he launched it. And since last year, Brent did over a million dollars in sales, around $300,000 in profit, he's doing close to $30,000 in profit every single month, which means if he would have launched his Amazon business six months earlier, he would have made an additional $180,000. So remember, every single month that you're waiting on launching your Amazon business, you're losing out on money. And most new entrepreneurs get stuck in analysis paralysis because they're afraid of making mistakes. But remember, oftentimes it's better to move forward and make mistakes than it is to just stand still. That brings us to mistake number three. And the third most common mistake I see people make is they don't follow a formula. A lot of wannabe entrepreneurs, they go to YouTube and they watch a bunch of videos about how to start a business but they never actually make any steps forward. And that's because one person saying to do one thing and another person saying to do another thing. What you need to do is pick a path and follow step by step that path. And that's part of the reason why I created my Amazon FBA program is to provide you a step by step path that'll answer every single question you have. And if you ever get stuck, there is a weekly Q and A call with me and other Amazon FBA coaches so that you can ask me or any of these coaches your question. So if you're serious about starting an Amazon FBA business, I recommend clicking right here, joining the waitlist for my Amazon FBA program. I will be opening up 20 spots for my Amazon FBA program next week. So click right here to get on the waitlist if you want to join this program. So click there to get more information and thank you for watching this video.